Okay, we're not really ready yet, and you're eating. There you go. We got we're it. Start the show no matter what. There's a podcast called Between Two Slabs. They consume mass media. It seems so sad. It's the great curator and Merlin. They can't grow pubes, so they gotta wear a merkin. They got no money, so I guess they gotta share. Just two nerds wishing they could grow body hair. Comics, cards, and toys, nothing that would interest you. It's the podcast that nobody listens to. All right, rise and shine, Curator Army. This is Merlin and Dan. The great curator, and it's another episode of Between Not Two just Slabs. any episode. This is going to be a special oh. episode oh, tonight, yeah. Merlin. Uh, mm. We have a impromptu celebrity guest um, out of nowhere that just decided that they wanted to uh, uh, grace us with their presence. So, you know, that, hopefully, that's right, man. You know, and uh, the curator has um, put me to work. I don't know if you saw the movie um, broadcast news from the 80s. But I feel like Joan Cusack in that movie today, trying to get everything done at the very last minute for the curator for his interview tonight, baby. Woo! Okay, so while Merlin is finishing up uh, getting the last minute edits ready so that hopefully we, you know, we can put this put this interview together. Let me give you guys a little bit of context to how we got to this point. okay? Okay. for those of you who have not been following the story on on Instagram. All right. So over the weekend, I was just going through, you know, Instagram feeds and TikTok feeds. And I saw this video of Jason Page from his own uh, page. So right. this is his content. And basically what happens is like I was I was scrolling through and I saw Jason's post about how he was uh, doing like a trade and how he was describing his autograph um, structure. Uh, right. basically like it had like three structures, regular autograph, a premium autograph, and like a premium item autograph. So okay. I said, oh, that's kind of interesting, you know, cause he's in the Pokemon community and we come from, you know, our origins are the sports card community. And I was like, wait, that's kind of different. Right. Because he basically charges $50 for a regular autograph. Um, as, as I understand it, it could be different. Uh, okay. he'll tell us, um, uh, a hundred dollars for a premium autograph. And then um, $150 for a premium item autograph. Whereas right. in the sports card community, like for a memorabilia show, the athletes, they charge for one single autograph. That's their base price. If you want to get an inscription, it could be anything like a like usually like a four word inscription. They charge a premium price on top of that. And then if there's a premium item like a ball or a jersey v- versus like a flat photo item, there's usually a premium attached on top of that. So it's a little bit different structure, right? So I thought that was interesting. So I, I copied the video and I shared it to my page. I just kind of cut it in half so that it wasn't so long, right. and um, I posted it. And I, I just I asked people, "What do you guys think about this 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 uh, fee structure?" And man, the comments on that it kind of blew up overnight. Like within about uh, uh, one like a one day span, it went to like twenty thousand views, which is pretty good for a, for a single post. And um, okay. unfortunately, most of the comments were very negative. They were very critical of, of Jason Page for how he was structuring his, his autograph fees. And I think that it had to do with the premium autograph, how the, the language that he was using to describe why it's a premium autograph. Basically, he was saying that it's a full name, more legible auto. And I think he, you mm-hmm. know, that kind of triggered a lot of people on the sports card uh communities uh side of things because we never heard of anything like that in right. fact i was thinking about it i was like why do people like why were people so upset and you know i can't really blame them because you know in the hobby uh when we make fun of people when they do like half-ass autographs all the time right when they put like an initial or like a little scribble or something that's not even legible we make fun of those people because we feel like any athlete should be held to some type of standard where you can you can write a legible signature, right? Right. So I think that's what triggered people, the fact that uh, he has um, um, a level of autograph where if you want it to be full name legible, you have to pay a certain price. And I think that's what triggered people because we never even heard about that before, right? right? That's not even something that we deal with in the sports card hobby. Um, so anyways, uh, the, the post blows up. A lot of comments. I purposely I did not tag 
Jason Page in the post because I didn't want him to see it as a call out. And to my knowledge, all the comments, people weren't really tagging him either or anything like that. So, you know, I didn't really I didn't really think too much of it. I mean, he's got like two hundred and forty five thousand uh, followers on Instagram, big time account. He's a celebrity. Right. All George that says, definitely. I didn't I didn't think too much of it. And then it was crazy. Like the next day I saw that he started following me on instagram and i was like uh -oh. oh crap i was like uh oh uh oh You're in trouble now <laughs> i was like all right so somehow this must have got his attention um okay maybe he just you know i don't know maybe maybe he thought it was funny or something right then okay. next thing no. i know he sends me he sends me a dm and i was like oh crap oh my uh -oh. gosh he's, you're in trouble pissed. now <laughs> he's pissed He's going to yell at me. He's going to say, oh, you know, you know, take down the post. Or I'm going to sue you. I'm going to have my attorney call you, whatever. And I was like, ah, crap, you know. So then I read, I opened up his post and I, I read it. And it was actually um, completely opposite than what I thought it was. Uh, he wrote me this very long, very well worded, very well thought out message, basically saying that, you know, hey, I saw that this post got a lot of views. Um, I guess bad press is good press. Right. Uh, all good. Don't worry about it. I saw a lot of negative comments on there. I wanted to respond to some of them, but the comment section was limited. So I just want to let you know that the way that I I um, uh, schedule my fee structure for autographs um, compared to what people sell them for on eBay, it's actually very competitive and it's actually a better value than a lot of other um, Pokemon celebrities that do signings at public events and things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, just want to let you know that um, all good. Don't worry about it. Um, Jason Page, right? So he wrote me that. And I was like, I was like, Dang it, man, I I feel like I hurt his feelings. You know, I feel like I, I put that post out there and somehow it got on his radar and he looked at it. And even though that was his video, I didn't do anything to it. Like he probably read the comments and he was like, you know, oh man, these people are like tearing me up. They're roasting me in the comments. So I actually felt, I felt bad uh, for that. So as soon as I saw that message, I wrote back to him right away. And I wrote, I wrote an equally long message to him, basically saying that, um, you know, uh, it was not my intention at all to uh, make fun of you or call you out or anything like that. Um, basically, I just thought it was, a, it was an interesting way of, of structuring your your autograph fees. And I wanted to kind of, I thought it'd be a good engagement post, um, essentially, where people will comment on it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of those comments were negative, but, you know, it was not my intention, you know, to create any type of controversy. So I apologized to him. Right. And then um, I thought that'd be the end of it. But then he actually came back. Uh, he responded to me again. And he said, you know what? Um, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I'm 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 always open to um, uh, constructive criticism about how I can, you know, uh, make it make my my autographs more accessible and how I can kind of monetize my business and something like that. And you know what? If you want to have a discussion about it, I'd love to hear your opinion coming from the card hobby side because I guess he attended his first national last year, so he's starting to kind of branch out into the into the more broad. Uh, card hobby space and I was like oh okay and he offered to to come on to the podcast and I said oh okay sure and um you know I said yeah that'd be great let's do it and then he's like okay when and I was like oh okay so he was serious um I better take advantage of this quickly and mm -hmm. uh, this all happened yesterday and then he just said you know what I'm free tomorrow let's do it tomorrow so that's how we got to this point um, in the conversation. And that's why uh, Jason Page is going to be on Between Two Slabs tonight. Uh, basically, what we're doing for guys, if you guys haven't been following, I'm going to I'm going to be interviewing him. It's, it's going to be our first real or my first real interview uh, on Between Two Slabs. Usually Merlin's the guy that does the interviews. But since I'm the one that got us into this mess, I have to do the interviews uh, this time. And it's going to, you know, it's going to be, you know how, like, we like to take different perspectives when we talk about things, Merlin. That's uh -huh. what I want to do with this interview. I want it to be like a business focused interview because, because we have the rare opportunity to talk to an industry professional, right? I, um, I don't know how he classifies himself, a, um, a talent, uh, entertainer, um, 
musician, whatever he is. But basically, he he's like one of the people that you pay to go to shows and he signs autographs and his, you know, he's famous. Right. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I want to talk about the the business side of that, because I'm, I'm very interested in how these people, they monetize their work, their name. You know, how do you balance, you know, signing an autograph for a fan that really loves you versus you know, signing an autograph where you think the guy's going to turn around and flip it on eBay, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. Like, how do you do you that? When you see people, you know, making money off of your name and, you know, you're not getting any cut of that, right? So how do you right. set up a business around your work and monetize that? So we're going to be talking about all that stuff. This is real industry, uh, professional inside knowledge that you guys are going to get tonight. Um, uh, so that's that's what's going to be the the focus of this interview, um, or or maybe he just might use this as an opportunity to curse me out for posting that thing. So oh, we don't see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I mean, you know, he might he might you know come at me, but whatever it is, it's going to be entertaining um, for sure. I'm ready for it. Um, we will have comments if if we if the interview goes well. Um, we will take it comments will. at it the will. end. If you, guys, if you guys have any um, pressing comment, throw up a super chat sticker and we will get to it. Yes. Otherwise, we'll try to get through the interview first because I do have a lot of uh, really um, thought out questions that I want to ask uh, Jason. I see that he is in the lobby right now, so I can bring him on any minute now. Uh, Merlin, are we hat. ready? With everything we are ready because I want to make sure I made a nice intro video for him. And Dan was like, Merlin, make sure it is safe. For tonight's show, don't uh, fit anyone. So we made a great video intro for them. I look forward to the interview. Dan called me like 10 minutes ago, goes, Merlin, I'm nervous as hell. I want to make sure this is right. I am nervous. I was like, I was like Dan, you're, you've got this, brother. You've got this, man. You're going to do well. you got some good questions already laid out. I've already read them. I approved them. If I didn't like them, I would have told you already. You're going to do well. So I hope y'all are here. If you're watching this right now, you are in the right place right now at the right yeah. time. So, Dan, let's get the show on the road, baby. You ready? All right, ready. You want me to do it? Oh, snap, Jason Page is here. The party's starting. Jason Page, welcome yeah. to the Slabs. Thank you so much for uh, being a, a good sport and, and agreeing to come to our show. Uh, how are you doing tonight? You got it, my friend. Thank you so much for that wonderful intro. I really appreciate it. <laughs> really good to be here. Really good to be here. Between two slabs. Oh, is that you and the other guy? Are you the slabs? And I'm yes, between you yes, guys. Yes, yes, <laughs> you know, they have slabs in Pokemon too, but basically the, it's a play on uh, Between Two Ferns, if you ever watch that. Yes, show. yes, yes. Oh, great, great, great podcast. <laughs> little, really they're, they're, and, um, they're a little too stoned on that uh, on that podcast, though. <laughs> well, we won't no, drugs tonight, no drugs here. No drugs here. No drugs for me. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So um, you are in New York, so I know it's a little bit later for you. We're correct, on the West correct. Here, so I do appreciate you taking the time to uh, to jump on our show. I already gave the – I don't know if you had a chance to listen in and um, hear the first, like, uh, 15 minutes or so, but I kind of gave context about how yeah. we kind of crossed paths and how we kind of got to this point and, and you decided you you would offer your time to come on this show. Um, any comments that you want to make uh, in regards to that before we get into the actual interview? Yeah, stuff? yeah. Um, I have a, 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 a policy that, that I, I, how I approach the haters and I don't mean you, but there's people in the comment section that they just say things that are just blatantly hateful. They're not even making constructive comments. They'll say stuff about my hair. They'll say stuff about my girl. They'll stay still just horrible, slanderous, evil hate. And, and I just kind of see all those people as people that are hurting inside. And they're really like, those are the people that I think go out in the world and are destructive and do bad things to other people. If they're willing to do bad things in public, you know, at publicly not unashamed calling people names and just spreading hate, basically, then these are the kind of people that we most need to love. 
because they're the ones that are going to mess the world up. So what I do a lot of times, and I couldn't do it on this post because it was so much hate and it, it really like disturbed me how much hate there was. Because on Facebook, I get some hate. And what I do is I, I private message people and I friend them and I talk with them. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, dude, you're really cool. I was just trolling. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean what I said. I was just, you know, this or that happened. Uh, next time you're in Ohio, can I buy you dinner? They're always like, they always come around. So I, I, I feel like, you know, th there's an opportunity to, to confront this hate with love with 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 compassion with understanding and and know that when people are willing to do that there's there's something going on inside of them that is hurting and that they just need somebody that's going to reach out to them and 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 understand so that's kind of how i first respond to it and you know i i i mean i i didn't see your post as hateful i saw thought cuz you're a pro in the industry you are You've been to the national, you understand the autograph space, and you were just kind of interested in how the autograph space worked with this particular video, which is really just a trade with a, another vendor. It's not even really like my menu or like what goes on in the autograph world. It's just kind of like. Oh, that a was thing like, that, a, like a challenge video or something. Is that what you were doing? Well, at the at, at these events, uh, the vendors are really busy the whole time. So at the end of an event, if there's a guy, a, a signer still there, if I'm still there or other people are still signing, which they usually don't, I stay really to the end of these events, uh, you know, to sign for anybody that, that might still be there. But the vendors don't have a chance to get away from the table. So... I make a make an I, I, I take the opportunity to go around to the vendors and I just talk with them and they all smack my hand and they all know me or they or they don't know me because it's a new city and they're they they could hear my performance across the venue but they weren't able to come over and get a thing signed so I'll go over and I'll offer you know I mean they'll literally have to come and stand in line for 20 30 minutes they can't do that while they're running a table so I go around and I just make them feel like I'm part of a whole event. I'm not just this guy that shows up and then leaves and, and they just heard me in the background or, or they couldn't get away to get the autographs or, you know, so that's my first motive is to, is to just go and, and spread myself around the vending table. And then guys were asking me to, to, for, if I wanted, if, if I could sell them autographs. And then I was like, well, let me not just, I'm not going to try to go make money with these vendors. They're, they're working. Let me do trades. These, these events are buy, sell trade events. These guys are trading all day long. They have a thing that they paid $5 for that's that he sells for 35. And I have an autograph that is relative priced based on the event and the other people that are there. I don't price my autographs at a certain price. I price it based on the relative price of what everybody's doing. And then I go lower and then I give away a free card and a free photo. Most of the Pokemon people at at least the Collecticon are charging more for their autographs and they're charging for the photos and they're giving autographs on uh, usually posters, pictures of their character or pictures of themselves. I'm giving autographs on Pokemon cards that are, you know, potentially resellable items. I don't know how many photos of me you could resell, but you could certainly resell a card that has a, that has a, a, an autograph on them, autograph on it. Plus I give everybody my gold trainer card, which people are selling online. One was even sold for $30 online without an autograph on it. I'm just throwing them out all day long at the event to all the kids. When I'm on stage, I get rid of at least a hundred of them. So I'm, I am like the super giver at these events uh, from the beginning, when I get there to the end, when I get there. So that's how I get to the vendors. And then I give them the, the, the opportunity and I tell them what I'm charging over at the other area, uh, which in at Collecticon was $50 for the auto with a photo and a free Jason Page card. The full auto is another thing that I learned at the National, which you probably know that you, know, you said, I think you said in your intro how the people are... Uh, some of the the you know that you you laugh when they get these scribbly autos you don't even know who it is what what they even did my autograph was like that for oh for since high school <laughs> kind of like high school, I started, yeah what's that like your your old autograph was like kind of 
not legible? Like it was a scribble or? Well, my auto, my, my autograph has been probably like everybody's autograph. They're not, nobody writes their name out really legibly mm -hmm. until it's requested of them by their teacher <laughs> in eighth grade or at the national where I saw the sports figures doing that and having that on their menu items. And I, I didn't know that that was a thing until the sports world sort of introduced me to that. The sports world also introduced me to the other menu items like the the um, the inscriptions and the different colors. And like there's all these things that are, you know, I'm just giving it away. I'm writing inscriptions. I'm doodling all over the place. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm writing whatever they want. I'm not writing their name if they don't want. The, yeah, that's another thing on the at the uh, at the national. If you write if you want your name not on the card you have to pay extra there's all these things that the sports people are doing i don't do all of them but i did recognize and it was requested of me by a lot of people that i write it out legibly and those people then go and grade the cards and then they go and sell the cards and those cards sell for more than the autograph that i was doing that which was just you know my normal autograph that is not legible so it's just you know it's part of the it's part of the ecosystem, how it works. And if the people don't know that, then, you know, they, all they have to do is watch Kareem Abdul-Jabbar go, uh, ab, do, and write his thing out yeah. so carefully for his $650 auto, full auto. He won't scribble it out anymore even because that it, it, it's Fair too enough. valuable to get yeah. the big one. So. Yeah. People anyway, that's kind of how I how I came across it, and that's how we get to the to the vendors and how you know the pricing is always based, and it's also based on the economy of the country. In some countries, they have they you know they don't have as much money, so I lower the autograph prices for there for that, and you know it it it's a it's it it changes obviously, but it can't change too much because all the people and the the. Uh, all of the stores and the resellers that have bought the autographs in order for their businesses to make money, they I can't lower the autograph too much because then they're all of a sudden I'm shorting everybody mm, so you have to be that mindful. bought autographs for the purpose of reselling. And so it's very hard to manage, you know, it's, it, it has to be managed. I have to manage it. And if some people are unhappy with the price, it's, you have to realize it's protecting all of the people that bought it. All of a sudden, if I start doing my autograph, when I first started doing my autograph, it was $10 and people bought bulk autographs from me before I knew how impactful the, the song was in the ecosystem and how much the autograph would add to the value of a card. I sold a lot of autographs for $10 and people you know, made lots of money off of those autographs in the beginning and consistently over only since 2020, I've been doing only been autographing cards since 2020. Has it gone up, uh, in this incremental way? Oh man. So you're, you're still relatively new to this. I mean, 2020 oh, yeah. like when, when the hobby really boomed and you're, you're coming from the Pokemon side, which is a completely different market. They, they mm -hmm. do their own way, but you're trying to kind of cross over into like maybe the sports card or trading card market, pop culture cards is what we call them. And you're trying to adapt some of the things that we practice over here to your own business model. Yeah. I mean, I was the first Pokemon signer at the national and, um, and they had us, you know, fill out that menu item. And I just, all those new, th we had to do it. You know, it was like, what, what's all this? <laughs> we didn't even know. I didn't even know that existed at the time. So, yeah, it's a, it's a learning. It's a learning curve. And also the Pokemon inv uh, investors and collectors, they're they're serious with the sports, too. So they they want the same things, the whole the same, you know, basic foundations apply to both to all collectibles. Actually, you sign a football, you want that football to have a, a clear contrast and if it has a special kind of pen it's worth more and it's if it's just a, scr a scribble that you can't understand it's not worth as much as a legible auto so you know it, it, it goes across the the entire collectible world i think the autograph the, world the uh the best practices of both of these markets and communities are starting to merge and you're, mm -hmm. you're trying to adapt to that and you're, you have to be mindful of that for your own business 
Yeah, one of the things that's uh that's interesting is that I'm I signed a lot of cards and I didn't know about the cards until 2020. That was when I first started getting sent cards to sign. Until that before then it was just the posters and pictures like the rest of the Pokemon people. Uh they sign a lot of them are now at Collecticons and since the card ecosystem has expanded, they're signing cards as well cuz people are bringing them a lot a lot more cards. But I sign can sign any Pokemon card whereas the guy who does the Squirtle voice just signs the Squirtle cards. Doesn't make sense for him to sign a Bulbasaur card because he did the voice of Squirtle. And so they're mostly still signing posters. So you know, it, it is a sort of a crossover, but a card in a slab as a collectible is a card in a slab as a collectible, whether it's a Elvis card or a sports card or a Pokemon card or a Yu-Gi-Oh card. There's just, you know, the card collectors are the, are the driving force, I think, behind. And you have to remember that they are grading these autographs as well. So they have to be done in a certain way in order to uh get these grades and then the collectors they base their pricing and reselling on the grades and those grades are you know their psa is in there looking at the auto making sure everything is exactly as it should be so you know how to make sure that your your auto gets a 10 <laughs> They have a they have a uh, standards best standards on PSA. You can look at how they do it. They want it to have a certain contrast. They want it to be within a certain area of the card, um, and they want to make sure that the pen doesn't streak in any area, and that you know the lines are just like they're grading the card for centering and any in little imperfections. They do the same thing with the autograph with the with the lines. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah, of that when you're signing. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially when people bring me the other thing you mentioned, the premium items, because the premium items get graded and authenticated, and they're looking to get double tens, basically, a 10 on the autograph and a 10 on the card. And if that's a card of considerable value that gets double tens, it gets a considerable bump in, in value in, in the secondary market. So, you know, those guys are, are very, uh, very, very conscious of the <laughs> the specificity of the autographs okay well i mean like i feel like we're getting a lot of good uh information already i told everybody that this is going to be like a, like an insider business focused conversation um and i have a list of questions i want to get to here uh but one thing sure. i wanted to ask you i'm just i'm just super curious about this is how the heck did my my little post get on your radar to the point that you felt you needed to reach out to me and, and comment on that uh, well, somebody somebody forwarded it to me, and then somebody forwarded something else that someone else forwarded to them, and you know, people are just forwarding me. They, there's a there's a, a a rabid fan base that will that that looks for everything that I have, and when I say rabid, they're rabid with love and with <laughs> concern for for what i what i put out into the world and they put make they make content in the world as well so they're taking and repurposing my content and they're thrilled that this content is out there and they're you know slightly disturbed that there's hate but you know hate is hate i'm not i'm not even you know it's not really about the hate it it, it, it that's the individuals that i do reach out to like i said i reach out to certain individuals uh with private messages and and friending and following but I'm but was more concerned just with with responding to the the people that don't understand why a autograph is so much or that you know the the other voice actors are charging more than me and not trading with vendors and they're not giving things for free they just you know the there's a lot of uh things that are relative in this whole in this whole thing that they're not really aware of and, and some of that is the rest of my career outside of Pokemon, which involves hundreds and hundreds of, of famous jingles and artists I've sung with and music that I produce and music that I write and concerts and theater and film and TV. And it's like, you know, oh, this guy's a one hit wonder. He's washed up. It's like, wait a second. Have you, have you have you gone to my website? Have you done any search? Have you just typed in jasonpage.com? I mean, there's like it's so it's so ignorant, but you know, I, I get it. People are very lazy and they're, you know, they just respond to what's right in front of them and they're impulsive. And if they have angst inside of them, it comes out in these hateful ways. So 
You know, yeah, that's, that's interesting that you point that out because we're, you know, here being my partner, Merlin, between two slabs, we're, we're no strangers to people hating on us uh, either. Yeah. And it's, it's, I like that perspective. I never really thought about that the way that you present it, basically, like that these people, they've got some other bad things going on in their life and they're just lashing out there. They're being reactive to things that they see. Um, and for you to take the approach to actually privately, friend them, privately message them and just kind of see if you can, um, you know, give an olive branch that that's, I think the hobby needs more of that, to be honest. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm guilty of not doing that myself, but I, I, I like that example. That's really cool. So I can appreciate that. Um, so with that, let's, let's get into the first question that I have here. Cause we're already, we're already talking about the business side of things here. Um, you kind of mentioned, uh, like I, you know, aside from your other professional work, which by the way, let me, let me just say that I, I was doing research uh, for this interview and I was reading your Wikipedia page and stuff like that. I mean, people n might know you as the guy that sings the Pokemon song, but you've got a huge body of work where to me, it seems like the Pokemon song would encompass like a very small percentage of your entire career. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Is it, is it, is like, how, how, how would you compare the singing the Pokemon theme song to everything else that you've done? Is it like your, your proudest accomplishment or is it, something that just blew up recently. Well, I didn't know anything about Comic Cons until 2016 when Pokemon Go came out. And the Pokemon generation uh, basically grew up on the song and the song was the underscore to their imaginations. Not me as an artist performing the song because I wasn't credited and I don't get royalties or anything. It just, it was a one-time fee. Uh, so they, it's just a song that underscores their imagination and they needed to grow up and become adults before they even thought, oh my God, that's a guy. That's a dude that sings a song. Who is he? And then they look me up and then you know, the whole thing rolls from there. But that didn't happen until Pokemon Go came out. Um, before then, I, I have ha done hundreds of other jobs, and it was just one of many uh, on my giant list of brands that I represent. Subway, eat fresh, or Lego Mania, Lego Mania, or the best part of waking up is soldiers in your account. Or just recently... You know, I had a song in Rick and Morty. I produced a song for Bubblegum Kids. Jingles that I produce and I write and I create. I did a song for one of the other TCGs called Nostalgics. Uh, I'm doing, you know, music for NFT uh, metaverses. And uh, and I write my own music. That's, that's in collaboration with a whole bunch of DJs in the EDM world. So, you know, jingles, TV theme songs, movies. I've been... Uh, it, it, done voices in sausage party in the muppets and annie in jersey boys and my theatrical career is also quite vast as i've done like world premieres of incredible musicals like joe's garage i've done all the the jesus musicals godspell jesus christ superstar hair um and i was in a incredible company called for the record that does all of the famous directors movies mixed on stage uh in musical form and uh in los angeles incredible environments um so you know i have a vast and varied career of doing all these different things um and pokemon just resurged in 2016 and i respond to the requests of these comic cons and now the requests of the card shows and requests of people to sing at their weddings and requests to sign cards and requests to you know do all sorts of pokemon related uh events uh oh, so stores from stores to comic cons to giant concerts and clubs and uh, all kinds of things you but i'm a wedding to sing the pokemon song yes yes i've, I've just got three w requests for weddings um one is in 2026 one is in 2025 oh, and one is later this year wow. um but the other thing is like there's a difference between me doing uh you know, of being a voice of a of a certain anime show, and and showing up in an event to sign autographs, and being the singer of the Pokemon theme song. Because when I go to an event, I'm not just showing up to sign autographs. I'm actually an entertainer at the event, doing a show of my music, my greatest hits, 
uh, as well as the Pokemon theme song. I do the Pokemon theme song, the Lego Mania theme song. I do uh, sometimes I play my, the Michael Jackson song that I sang uh, backgrounds on and wrapped in with Michael Jackson. And I do my jingle greatest hits and I sing, you know, a, a medley to all the greatest artists that I've sung backgrounds for who have passed like Ray Charles and Meatloaf and Kermit the Frog. And, you know, I'm a performer actively engaging with audiences at these events, not just a guy sitting in the celebrity row signing autographs. I'm, I'm part of the whole program. So since with this resurgence of Pokemon now that the song that you did, like almost, you know, nearly 25 years ago, do you see that? Like, is this, is, is just the Pokemon aspect of it? Is that enough to be like a full-time job in itself with all these conventions? Um, you're going through everything? Well, you know, I still do productions and I still do plenty of other sessions and I still do theater. I mean, it is, but, uh, but in, in various ways, you know, there's, there's the e-commerce side of it. There's the live event side of it. There's the signing autographs side of it. So these three things are, you know, working together. Uh, but they they don't, they, they don't make up the entirety of my, of my career. There's still a lot of other things going on. And uh, like I said, it's one song of many. It's one credit of hundreds uh, that I can I can sing about, <laughs> as well as my own original music. What What's inter interesting to me is like you said you don't get any royalties for singing that song, no credit at all. No, that, uh, that it in the on the in, inner sleeve of the CD, it does have my name next to the song. I also sang Viridian City on that same record, so that's another hit on that same album, uh, "To Be a Master." Um, but no, I know it was a one-time payment, and uh, the royal there are no royalties for for that. And that's like that's uh, like for that song, practice, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, not not particularly. Uh, it depends. All all deals are different, and they all manifest in different ways. Mm, interesting. Um, so I wanted to kind of touch base on what you said. You when you get booked to go to a show, they they always book you to perform, and then do they do they. Um, book you to sign autographs and then you get paid a fee for signing autographs for, for, for a couple hours or do they give you like your own booth where you set up as a vendor and you sell your own stuff yeah it, it it's usually i get a fee for my performance that's based on the size of the venue how many people are going to show up if it's the thousands of people it's a more uh, bigger fee than a, a store that will pay me a, a fee for my performance inside the store with an acoustic guitar standing on a chair amidst everybody at the store in the middle of texas somewhere uh and then i sell the autographs uh and whatever i have on my table which is a collection of my you know my cards and old memorabilia videotapes uh old pokemon fun coloring books or slabs or different things i have and i also sign other people's items and like i said at a price that is relative to the economy of that place um and that, and that, that's it they then the flip places you know uh basically get my performance and then i get the autographs do you have to share any revenue with the promoter when you do stuff um, like that no no you, a lot of times they we do a thing called a uh a a, a payment against sales so they basically say you're going to make the we, we guarantee a guarantee against sales sorry you're going to get a, this much of a guarantee if you make that much in sales then they don't have to pay anything they oh. they just pay the travel and travel and uh, hotel if you don't make that much then they pay the balance of it because mm -hmm. it's their responsibility to bring all the people in and to advertise and to make sure that people show up. And if people don't show up and then there's no autograph sales, then you show up and you're, you know, you're not making your, your minimum, your guarantee. Uh, yeah. And in, and in many cases, when they give me the balance of the guarantee, I give them autographs for it as well. So they just basically become the customer. Interesting. Interesting. And well, you said your fee structure, I mean, in the video that got a lot of, uh, you know, attention and comments, it was fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, and one and one fifty. Yeah, is that is that like your standard? You said you adjust it based on the economy, but is yeah, that like yeah. Uh, well, it, it it depends really the 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 fee. Like I said, if it's a lower lower economy, it'd be a forty dollar autograph for for that 
particular store in the middle of nowhere where nobody has money or like I'm at a place where it's a lot of cosplayers and they're not, you know, they're not collectors, they're cosplayers at a club or something. So they get a $40 autograph. Um, and then, you know, then, so that, then the, the premium autograph or the, the legible autograph will be twice that. And then the premium item is really based on the value of the item. If somebody brings a an item that's a a thousand dollar item and they get it graded and it and it turns into a five thousand dollar item with my autograph it, but it would only turn into a twelve hundred dollar item without the autograph they just made three hundred dollars off of that so it all depends on the value a lot of people want to get they didn't they, they do this a lot with uh mitsuhira arita the pokemon the guy who did through the charizard mm -hmm. people buy his autograph slots so that they can get their their card signs because they know that they will accrue in value exponentially many many thousands double triple quadruple the the value sometimes so he has to kind of protect that so that he's not taken advantage of so what he does is he either puts their name on it or he you know he he does it a little different way people actually now have found ways to like erase the names from the cards so that they have more value so so instead of like you know just trying to police it we just have to negotiate a price based on a, on the value of an item um but you know i i can just tell you can look on ebay and see what the sold items are for like basically a a ten dollar card uh a og holographic card that has the, the auto on it could go for a hundred dollars so Go go for a couple hundred dollars if it's graded and authenticated and double tens. It could be you know three, four, five hundred dollars. So when you see your autograph selling for like you know upwards of two hundred plus dollars, do you like what do you what goes through your mind when you when you think about that? It, it it's it's really amazing. What what what's really happening is people are assigning this value because of the experience that they've had with Pokemon. The 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 importance of Pokemon to them. And, and that's why the cards are so valuable because of this valuable experience that people have had and the, the, the nostalgia attached to it. So it's the same kind of, oh my God, when you see a, a Charizard, that's like a, a holographic Charizard worth $250,000. It's like, what? That little piece of cardboard is worth $250,000? How is that possible? Because this experience of nostalgia, this experience of joy and pure uh, imagination just filling you with energy when you're a child is what is ultimately connected to this cardboard. It's ultimately, and same thing with the, with baseball, like the baseball guy, like if you, if you saw that hit happen, you're connecting to the nostalgia of that great baseball player and his accomplishments. Just like you're connecting to the nostalgia of a Charizard when you were a kid and you had that and you ran on to to play with your friends or you ran home to watch a TV show or you you just had this experience. And so we're basically just validating people's beautiful, joyful, internal, personal experiences with these items of value. And the autograph is just adding a little bit of energy to it because that song was going on in their heads through their whole Pokemon experience. And it, and now that song lyric is on the card and the guy that sang that is on the card. So it's just, you know, it just adds to the value for them. Um, but I, it's really all about them. They created the value. I didn't, I'm just responding to that value, that love, that energy, that time and effort that all these people went through throughout their whole childhoods of collecting and enjoying and playing and imagining this Pokemon world. So it's, I have incredible gratitude for, for, for the fact that this is happening and I didn't know about it until 2020. I'm just starting to, and I'm, and I, and I want to protect the value of those people's items and the, and the value of that nostalgia as well. So I was about to you ask know. you that, like, I mean, if you see your autograph, if you sign a card, like a $5 card or something, and it sells for like $50, $60, I mean, it would be hard for you not to like get a whole bunch of cards yourself and you know, sign them and, you know, throw them on eBay, right? But you don't do that. 
I mean, I ha I have a store, a web store, and and they're just you know people. Some people, they, I, it's just the basic cards and some other you know higher value items that are graded. Every now and then, uh, somebody will say, "Oh, you should grade these," or "Oh, you should you should use the signs of Funko Pops and get them graded." PSA is doing Funko Pops now, and so I, I do that, and I have some of those online as well, and. And the collectors really, really go for it. And and I think it's great that people are doing that. That's the secondary market. I, I kind of see Pokemon as like it's a hundred billion dollar industry, right? At the top. A mm -hmm. hundred billion dollars of the corporate products that this company has created. And then the bottom of the pyramid, all down here, is probably trillions of dollars created from the love of everybody that makes art that makes music that does podcasts that does cosplay that does events that does toys they, they do all kinds of things that are not the pokemon official the t-shirts and and clothing items and paintings and it's it, there there's giant ecosystems of of pokemon things created out of the love of people and the energy and love that they're that, that they experience as children has now turned into their own businesses and the people that are getting my autographs and selling them and getting them graded and putting them in their shop. These are guys that own shops. They're not in a shop. They're not, they don't have Pokemon shop because they they're, they're businessmen. They want to start a business. They're Pokemon shops because they love Pokemon and they love the community of Pokemon and they they're doing what they love. So I think it's great that they're selling they're selling these things for more money out there and I'm trying to be at a fair price so that they can go and make more money. So you're not flooding the market because you're mindful of maintaining the the scarcity of your autograph and the value of it. Well, th this is a, a very difficult question to to really answer what is a scare what is scarcity in a in a global ecosystem with 2 billion Pokémon fans. Um, I've only been signing Pokemon cards since 2020. And if I, if, if I were, if I signed a million cards, which I probably couldn't even do in my lifetime because it would just take too long, <laughs> that would be one, one thousandth. I, I don't even know what the math is on that, but if there's a bill, if there's 2 billion Pokemon fans that actually in their lives go to karaoke and sing that song and have some sort of you know attraction to to well, appreciation for the song i don't know if they want an autograph from me but like what is scarce in a in a world that big like where does it where does it overflow do you know any of the numbers of your sports fans like how many babe ruths are there how many autographs did babe ruth sign well you know like for for cards that are not graded, it's very very hard to determine that. But I think right. that's what causes that's why the the trading card community is or the hobby is very interesting because now we have these companies that will grade them and they will track the populations of certain right. grades. Certain What's the population of a of, of a Babe Ruth? Uh, I mean, it depends what it is. If it's like if it's like one of his rookie cards, just all of them, grade. just just all of them. Like, how many Babe Ruths do you think are in circulation in the? Okay. A big trackable card, world. I, I'd have to imagine like less than a thousand. I'd really? Imagine, for all the cards that he's had printed, maybe less than a thousand. I could be wrong. I have. I really have. How no many? Idea. How many? Uh, how many Reggie Jacksons are there? Oh, there's probably thousands of them out there. Right. Right. So, I, I so the population of a Kobe Bryant rookie card. It's in it, like a, a high grade, like a PSA nine's like in the twenty thousand copies. Right. Right. So, and that's Kobe Bryant, uh, an American only sports star he's definitely international you know because of of his of his status but pokemon is is completely worldwide almost every country i've been to has they're they're lining up at the at stores by the hundreds in belgium in the netherlands in the uk i'm going to australia i'm going to the philippines i've been to malaysia so it's like kobe bryant might be big in those places but I don't understand. I, I don't know what scarcity is in, in this giant world. Like, I don't think I could sign if I signed a million cards, it would still be such a drop in the bucket of Pokemon fans yeah. in the world. So, but I get it. You know, you, we, there is a, there is some kind of scarcity that you want to determine what that is and keep it at a certain level. Um, it would be interesting to find out like Mitsuhira Arita and I've only been signing since 2020 how many cards that guy has signed uh because he's one of the guys that they 
you know, they go after for the autographs to multiply uh, the value. I, actually, and, I think we should figure that out because it, yeah. if they're authenticated by PSA or, or, or Beckett, then, you know, the pop counts will tell us. So maybe somebody in the comment section or somebody's reading or yeah, watching yeah. this. Yeah, That'd be nice to know. Back, they can do that research and, and let Jason know. Um, question now. Let's move on to this question here. So we talked about your you signing autographs at cons. Okay. You said that you signed for the fans that come see you at your booth. Afterwards, you try to make it around to go visit vendors and sign for them if they didn't get a chance. What's what's your policy outside of conventions? Like if you're in the public, if you're at the airport or at a restaurant, oh, I'm, and- I'm I'm just I'm I, I'm giving them away left and right. I'm, I have a stack of those uh, Jason Page Gold Trainer cards always on me, so that oh, I really? can give them to everybody everywhere I go. At one point, that's, I thought I thought how down, many right? Pikachu cards are there? There's got to be like. You know, there's got to be uh, 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 millions of Pikachu cards. And I was like, well, I got to make millions of my cards so that I could just give them out to everybody and give them out to kids. Matter of fact, I made them so that I could give them to a, a guy named Pocalanthropy who gives them to children in uh, hospitals by the stacks. And I made my first run of them was 55,000 of them. So I still have, you know, many boxes of many thousands of them that I give out to to kids and to charities and just everywhere I go to people. And these are the ones that I that I that I give out. That one's actually signed. <laughs> but if the other the other signature so in twenty twenty one. We don't have a um, policy where you won't take a picture, you won't sign an autograph if someone oh, no. it in public. No, no, that's the whole p- Oh, he's frozen, guys. Let's give him a second. Let me look at my notes here. The only the, the the reason I give away the photos is because it's so weird to tell somebody no 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 photos of me. It's so awful. So like what these other voiceover artists when they charge for photos and then they're walking around, they can't give somebody a free photo if they were charging for photos. So I don't charge for the photos. I give the photos away. So I'm always taking photos with everybody and these cards I told you I'm throwing out throwing them out for free everywhere i go so there so i have so many of them to throw out for free so that's pretty much my policy and somebody wants an autograph where when i'm out somewhere i I give them the autograph you know i think that um this might this this moment right might go a little bit viral because there's actually uh i don't know if you ever fly delta airlines but their their pilots carry um cards trading cards of the of the planes that they fly on and it's gone viral now that they're like challenge coins, you know, like in the military, they have challenge coins. So you can actually yeah. go up to a Delta airline pilot and ask for the card and they always carry them on, on each other. And they, you know, they hand them out. So now I think that people, if they know that you carry this Jason page Pokemon card on you at all times, I think you have people <laughs> coming up to you filming themselves, uh, trying to get a, a card from you. So that might, that might be a thing that happens. Okay. That's very interesting, but it's, cool I hope that so. you, <laughs> yeah, it, it's cool that you, uh, that you're 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 gracious to your fans because you know i imagine like like we were talking before about being mindful about not having uh too many of your autographs on the market but it it seems like from your answer before you're not concerned about that all because you you know you you'll sign for anybody anytime anywhere yeah and 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 i and obviously uh i'm giving away the autographs but when i'm in the context of a comic-con I have, there's a prices there. So, but I do give a lot to the kids and any kids that come up that want to trade because I I trade them for autographs and they just give me whatever they want to give me and I'll sign autographs for them because they're, yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing. There's a lot of kids, cool kids at these events. The kids at the, I was just at an event in New Jersey and these kids brought me a Jason mask (laughs) and they traded me this Jason, you know, Friday the 13th mask for autographs. And then they went and they traded my autographs for something else and they came back and got more things signed. They just kept on coming back and forth. It was really fun. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, okay. So my, my next question for you is aside from uh, signing autographs at like these conventions or these events, um, how else are you, and you have, you said you have your own store where you sell your stuff. Is there, is there any other way that you're like monetizing this, uh, this, uh, the Pokemon theme song? Like, I think because I, I think it's interesting that you didn't get royalties for that, but you're still like people recognize you and credit you for that, and you're still popular, you know, 25 years later. 
Yeah, uh, well, it, it's gaining, po I'm gaining popularity because, like I said, it was just in their imaginations, and now they're adults introducing their children to the theme song. Um, and no, the theme song isn't monetized any other way than, you know, it, it, the, the owners of the copyright monetize the theme song on all platforms. Uh, I only monetize my live performances uh, and and you know the autograph world that uh that exists at comic cons mm -hmm. um i monetize my other production skills and my other vocal uh achievements and my theatrical skills and my producerial skills and marketing as well for products and different things but the song is the song is the song is owned by somebody else and mm -hmm. they are I, i've heard i think i think the uh the one documentary I, I saw said that the song has the song itself has made a um, hundred million dollars. Oh wow! Just, Just the song. song alone, not for me, for the writers and the ecosystem. And has has like the Pokemon company ever reached out to you to try to do something new with you? Um, they did ask me to sing uh, the twentieth anniversary song but they offered me so little money that my management wouldn't let me do it <laughs> okay so they got somebody else to do it <laughs> wow wow that seems like that seems so wrong um but uh you know you you mentioned all these interactions that with your fans can you you know i you know we're we're, we're winding down on our interview and i want to be respectful uh, to your time and maybe we can get to a comment or two but i wanted to ask you can you share like uh, a recent positive interaction you've had with a fan that that made you feel really good. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, I had a a fan that was uh, that that gave me a Charizard tin, and I thought, oh wow, this is really cool. He's giving me the Charizard tin, and inside of it was all kinds of cards that were like you know all organized in the different. Uh, characters and there were multiples of each one and it just was so cool the dude is also an incredible videographer and he posted on his channel like eight or nine like fully edited videos with music underneath and uh, I'm gonna you know hire him to do my um, an another event down the road but he was just there and and capturing this 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 experience for me just because he was just being cool and giving me this incredible merchandise and i just you know i signed a whole bunch of things for him in return and it was it was just really great people are constantly they want to contribute they want to help they want to they want to share their the cool stuff that they have and and they want to share their value basically he was like, was able to consult with me on some of the cards that some of these kids were bringing over and somebody else wanted to trade and I didn't know what the cards are worth. And he was able to be like, yo, that card is, that's a really good one. You should trade for that one. But that one's not, not so good. I mean, there's so much to know. And when people volunteer their information, it, it, it it's really great. It's really just a wonderful feeling because there's so much that I don't know and that I need to learn. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. And I'm, love for you to share some of your perspective with me on the you know the, the the autos that you collect and what you're looking for in auto how much you've paid for some of these autographs and you know if you have well, any you pokemon know, uh slabs or it's interesting i have a few pokemon slabs i don't have any autographed ones but it's interesting because i was looking at your page and i was looking at your website doing some research here and i noticed you not only sign your name but you put like um gotta catch them all you put like little quotes on there and i think i've seen like maybe some doodles here there like yeah what is your standard what is your standard autograph somebody's paying for your autograph like what does that include yeah that, that's whatever the price is like i said sometimes it's cheaper but i always write the, a phrase and I write and I and I do my 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 name and then sometimes I'll draw a little heart I'll draw a little flower um, I do do doodles on merchandise as well that are a little more elaborate with multiple colors and for those I charge more money sometimes I auction them off it all depends on the complexity of it but uh, you know the, the a lot of these uh, po the Pokemon signers will do little doodles and they'll charge more money f for those doodles it doesn't happen very often. Sometimes I'll do them. I do have some cards. Oh, I have them right here with me. 
but the cards are specially designed for me to doodle on the back of them so that you know they become oh, doodle cards instead of doodling over a pokemon card i'll doodle on a card that has a back that's specially just white just to be doodled on uh but that, yeah it's it's, it's the same thing you get like a, a you get like a uh is that happen in the sports world where you get you know a, a kobe well, bryant but he'll draw a little basketball or something well, I'll, I'll tell you this so in 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 the sports card world or even like the pop culture world basically we're all conditioned to uh just view like standard autographs just just your name you know most of the time mm -hmm. it's your first name sometimes it's your first and last name uh it just depends on the athlete or the uh the celebrity or something like that but if they do something weird like they do a little doodle people go wild like there's this there's this basketball right. player if you, if you follow basketball his name is Victor Wimbiana and he's like the hottest uh basketball player in the world right now but a couple of his autographs have like weird doodles and they're viewed as unique one-off cards that exponentially increase the value just because of a doodle um in football yep. tom brady he's recently signed some autographs where he puts like funny uh, uh phrases on there too and, pe and people go wild for that stuff so it's, right right it, so you've it, been at the at the national they have that on the menus right for the for the sports guys you've you've yeah, You've but bought they, at the they national before. Right? Do that on a card. Uh, most like athletes, if they sign like a ball or a photo, there's more room for them to do something like that. It's very rare uh -huh. to see stuff like that on trading cards. So the fact that you write a a, uh, a catchphrase or an inscription and then you draw a picture on it is really kind of like a unique thing. Um, that's actually kind yeah. of crossing over into like three different levels because you're doing a sketch, which there's like sketch cards. Then you're doing your autograph. And then you're doing your inscription on top of that. So I mean, if you're if you're looking for feedback, I'll tell you that you're giving you're actually giving way more value than you should be. You know, if you were actually charging for each of these things, it would be probably right. like you know triple the value of whatever you're charging. Um, right, right. I, 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 yeah, that that's also yeah, yeah. I do. I, I, feel like, I, I feel like every card that you're signing is almost is almost unique in that aspect because you have different doodles. To separate them unless you're yeah. doing the same doodle over and over again no no i mean I, I i do a lot of different doodles on on cards but yeah i i have been you know i've been told that i'm I, not only am i giving away the, the the phrase and uh and the photo and the free jason page trainer card <laughs> but then i'll do a doodle on it as well and my price is lower than most most other people that are doing much less than i am as well uh so you know I, I i don't know i mean i'm i'm i feel like i'm i i i feel like it's a fair price relative to everybody else if everybody else was a hundred dollars and then i'm the fifty dollar guy then it's like oh well why am i the cheap guy you know everybody else is charging a hundred dollars and then they're charging twenty dollars for the photo like i'm over here the bargain bin guy over here but no i feel like it's, i feel like just i feel like there is an overcharging that can go on uh I mean, I don't know, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, if it's a $650 autograph, but, you know, what do you, people pay what they, <laughs> what they think something is worth. Um, so, yeah, like you know, I just, I just try to be fair to the, to the, to the relative uh, income status of the, the crowd, basically. Because, I mean, like, if we're just talking like hypotheticals here. If you were at a convention and people were signing up to pay your autograph and you had on your board... Um, standard autograph price, 50 bucks, inscription, $20, doodle, 25 bucks. I'm sure people would pay that to get all three. Do you like, but it's, yeah. Like and then there'd be, then you, yeah. And then you would post is, is like, you're trying to give as much value as you can to your, to your fan base. But do you struggle as being like a, as a business owner to not monetize that? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I, it's all about your, your perspective, you know, I mean, obviously if we posted that on your channel, there'd be even more hate because of that. <laughs> oh, you're charging more for that. Oh, you're charging more to write that word. Oh, four words is more than three words. You know, you could just, but at the national, we had to do that because that was their policy. Um, you know, the, so it's my policy to give you a free photo. I'm not going to charge you for that photo. It's my policy to give you a free Jason Page trainer card that you can sell on eBay. <laughs> it's my policy 
to write the catchphrase without without adding adding a price to that. When I doodle, I I I can add some you know add a add a price to that depending on the the complexity of the doodle. Obviously, hundreds of dollars if I'm doing multiple colors, art pieces and stuff like that. But uh, and that's art. That's not just a writing a word. But you know, I I don't I don't need to balance it because uh, I have a, a robust amount of projects that are all satisfying me in many ways, financially, creatively, spiritually. Uh, so you don't, you don't uh, need so, to squeeze you know. your, your fan base on the Pokemon side of things. Right. I mean, it's, a, you know, they're, they're getting squeezed by everybody else in the line, charging for photos and giving That's them a piece true. of paper with a character on it that they can't even sell if they wanted to. <laughs> I would say uh, I'll give you a, a couple of suggestions. I would say if you got really good at drawing like Pikachu or something like that, and you did it sparingly, that would yeah. definitely be a premium card that people chase down. Because that's that's the aspect of things for collectors is they want to chase down the rarest things that nobody else has. Yep. And if they found out yeah. that Jason Page has this signed card of a Pikachu and there's only a couple of them out there, it would be a thing. People would go crazy for it. Yeah, yeah, I do draw the Pikachu and the Gengar on a, uh, a thing called Mystery Pop. We do Funko Pops with it. With most of them have Pikachus, but one in ten has a Gengar Doodle. So you know, I am, and I can draw Pikachu and Gengar pretty well. So. <laughs> oh, okay, awesome, awesome. But I haven't been doing it on cards, just on Funko Pops. Okay, so maybe that's maybe that's the next thing that people will. Yeah, know, that's the idea. Me, and then, like, you make your own cards. Do you make like limited edition cards? Number yes. cards. Yeah, I have. Hold on, I'll show you. I've got, I've got six cards right here. That was the first card that I made right there, and there's only about twenty five of those. Then wow. I went and then I made that one. It's more like a V, Pokemon V card, and there's about two hundred of those. Then we we had that one. Uh, and then we went on to, this is lightning card packs. There's only 55 of those guys, but there's 200 of them that are non hollow, hollow paper. And then I did a gold metal one. Uh, and I did a silver metal one for the 25th anniversary. And there's 200 silvers and 100 golds. So yeah, they're limited edition ones. And there's quite a few more as well that have they, been created sold out or available on your website. Um, well, they, all of those are sold out, except for the except for the the gold card, um, which is this one, uh, which I'm giving out for free without the autographs. But you can buy it with the autograph on my website, and uh, the, and there's more limited cards coming out. People people just like to make them. They're 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 really becoming very common. People, everybody's making their own, you know, right. custom Pokemon cards. Uh, I do. There is a a card leaf actually made a card that was available at the national and they made 120 of them and they sold out instantly to leaf customers and now quite a few of them have been slabbed and come back graded and they're on the secondary markets and it's that's an incredible card because leaf as you know uh from their sports cards don't allow logos right mm -hmm. they'll always have the guy in the in the picture but they'll photoshop out the logo in my card i'm holding a funko pop a pokemon funko pop so I saw in that. this I was, I was wondering how they got away with that i was i was like i didn't realize leaf didn't do that and i'm like wow well they made this card and it's got pokemon and funko logos inside of the photo of yeah. this card so i think that's why it's kind of that's a rare card because of that i think that it's gonna it that value that's gonna go because of that so my, my last question i, I want to be respectful of your time here we are winding down the interview guys here um and i want to give you time to uh you know tell everybody where they can find you and everything like that but um my last question here is you kind of showed us that little rack of of your personal cards but do you also collect like pokemon stuff do you have anything that you like is your prized possession you want to show off um, I don't have it here with me, uh, but I do have a collection of sealed VHS tapes, uh, Pokemon VHS tapes. And then I started collecting actual other VHS tapes as well that are all sealed that I will be grading 
Um, and the Pokemon ones I have graded. And uh, the, uh, the sealed graded VHS market. Sealed graded VHS market. It's just starting to come on. It's not really, you know, it's not really there yet. Uh, but it, but I have some of the first Pokemon sealed VHS tapes that I autographed. Uh, and that are sealed and slabbed by IGS. And now I believe that CGC and Beckett are doing it as well. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get some of those companies to do it as well. Some of those VHS tapes are going for like 30 grand plus, you know, depending on what movie it is. So that's a, that's interesting that you actually have a collection of those. Oh, you might be sitting yeah. on a gold mine, Jason. I actually have the, uh, the, the card right here. Here's another, another one of the, one of the Jason Page cards. That's from a game called Nostalgics. Nostalgics is a, a game that made a Jason Page card, <laughs> which is incredible. Game. You're in the I'm game. I'm actually in the game as a playable card. Oh, wow. It's quite okay. remarkable. That's awesome. Okay, well, um, I, 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 I promised 30 minutes. I told you it'd be 30 minutes. We're way over that. But thank you so much for uh, taking the time to, uh, to come on here. Well, first of all, thank you for taking the time to message me about that post. Again, I felt really bad because I didn't want to come off like I was making fun of you or anything like that. But, you know, you know, it, it takes a lot. If I, if I was in your position, I probably would have been really upset and said some mean things. But for you to actually reach out to me and and say, hey, you know, everything's good. This is my position and kind of explain it to me. It, it, it opened up my eyes, uh, gave me perspective about your side on the business side of things. And uh, it made me want to, to, to do more research and get to know you more. So I really appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you giving up your night to uh, be on this little podcast and, and tell us all these behind the scenes uh, industry uh, practices about being a performer and how you have to balance monetizing your name versus being gracious to your fans. And I, I think just from the comment section, a lot of people appreciate that. And, and maybe cool. you want a lot of people over. Um, is there anything you want to plug? Any can, like a lot of people are asking about your website, where can they support you? Where can they buy things from you? Do you have like a cameo that you want to share or anything? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything can be found at my, at my uh, Jason page.com. All my socials are there. I am on cameo as well. I do little, you know, personal theme song messages for people and uh i'll be at collecticon houston if you're uh, gonna be down there come and see me uh collecticon. performing on saturday and sunday at collecticon houston awesome okay i have one more request and yeah and you can say no to this this might be asking too much but can before you sign off can we get a gotta catch them all between two slaps <laughs> The, the the business cameo that that uh, you could get and charge a charge I don't know what the price is for that but they have a personal cameo and business cameos but I'll give you a, gotta catch them all between two slabs awesome you thank go. you so much Jason I'm gonna play the outro for you here thank you so much I will contact you uh, on Instagram and then just wrap things up but thank you so much for for being with us tonight cool dude be safe. Starting. <laughs> All right, you got it done. Good job, man. Wow. Good questions. That was that was something. Huh? That was something. Awesome. How do you feel? I feel great. I thought I thought yeah. it was a great conversation. I mean, were you listening in? Definitely. Yo, did you start to see me below, like laughing and giggling and checking the stuff out? Um, I really learned a lot from him, and I really liked his energy. And he just, like, I don't think he's in this just to make money. Like, you could tell he really enjoys being in, in with the crowd and going to these festivals. Like, I think he is just. He's smitten. He's like a little kid. He's loving every minute of it. You enjoy all you can. And I don't think people understand. Uh, I mean, I'm in the industry, especially with actors. It's it's a grind. It doesn't matter how successful or how much money you make as an actor or a performer or a singer. You're always having to hustle because you never know what may happen tomorrow. 
you may be done with tomorrow. You may be canceled. No one may care about you. So you've got to like grab all you can, your fame, your fortune, why you why you have the uh, the chance. Because tomorrow it you may be forgotten about. So I'm glad that he still gets to ride that wave and that he enjoys what he does. And I think because of that, that's what's made him successful now. Yeah. You know, like some takeaways that I got from, from this what is interview it? is number one is um when you when you hear that this guy, Jason Page, he's the guy that sung the Pokemon song back in 1999 or right, whatever right. The show came out, you think like like I was reading some of the comments in the post and people were saying, oh, he's washed up, a one hit wonder course, type thing, yeah. right? You think that this is all he's known for. But when I was doing my research about him, I know he's got a huge, legit career. He did all these things, right? And Pokemon is probably like the smallest thing that he did, but it just resurged in popularity like 25 years later. So right, it's, it's kind of like funny to Vulture me. took him in. That yeah, Vulture like, took him in. He did this thing, you know, back in 1997 or whatever, 99. And it's been that long now. Uh, wow. And it just popped up, you know, 25 years later. So that was interesting to me. What, what was really shocking is that he doesn't get any royalty for that song. Like, is that common for a performer not to get a royalty? Like, I mean, I guess well, he didn't write uh, the prob before, Probably but. back in that day, it, yeah, it was probably a little tougher. And if you're like a struggling artist, you're just happy to, to sign something. And you probably don't have the right agent at the time. And they're probably just cheap. And they're just saying, I'll pay you one paycheck for the song. And that's it. And yeah, I meant it's common. You're probably agents going to fight more for royalties these days. But back then, it happened a lot. Especially with like successful singers back in the fifties and sixties, you hear about it all the time on um, on shows where you know they they got had. These people probably had one of the most successful sh songs of all time, and they probably saw a thousand dollars of it. That's it. I remember hearing a story. I think it's the guy who sings the Lion King song or one of the Disney songs. I think it's a Lion King song where um, they offered. Disney offered to pay him a flat fee, like a mm -hmm. million dollars to sing the song. But he said, right. no, I want I want a royalty. Yeah. And they gave him the royalty and it turned out to be like 10 times more than what they initially paid him. And it's still paying him. So it's kind of crazy that he doesn't have a royalty on that song because he would have made so much money. Well, just like that. Alec, remember Alec Guinness? I think Star Wars was going to pay him $250,000. Instead, he just goes, give me 2%. Yeah, 2% of the merchandise yeah. royalty, right? So <laughs> interesting. I mean, but I guess like how would you know at that time you that don't. Pokemon was going to be a, a no. thing, right? It's like a gamble. No. So it just kind of depends on where you are in your life if you're willing to take that gamble or not. 25 years later, right? Yeah. I wonder if like – because, like, you know, like The Rock, right? When The Rock came back mm -hmm. into wrestling, part of his contract negotiations was that he gets to own the rights to The Rock name. Now he owns it outright. I wonder right. if like, there's ever there'll be a scenario where like the Pokemon company <laughs> will approach him to do something, and he'll say, "Well, you got to give me the royalty for my old original song," and they're like, "Okay, fine, whatever." Right? Maybe he'll get it back someday. Yeah, um, I, I mean, let's hope. I mean, what was I listening to today? Oh, it was Howard Stern actually, and they were actually talking about Stan Lee. Same thing with Stan Lee. It happened to him. He was just an employee under what the marvel brand uh -huh. or whatever uh -huh. he was creating this but that was just his salary that was his job to create these things he wasn't making a residual off the the creative residuals off this it was just that it was his job and that's why they felt bad for him and the marvel and wh whoever it is uh disney made him uh and put him in every movie and tv show so he could get some kind of royalties off all those. Oh, is that why they did it? Yeah. So he get a royalty, huh? Oh. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't make millions. He didn't make. He made nothing when it got sold by Disney. He made nothing. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. What um, happened back then. And and then another give, uh, takeaway that I got from that interview is that 
it's cool that he actually carries these cards of himself around all the time, like a Europa pilot, right? Yeah. But now I hope I hope this becomes the thing. I hope that it gets out there and people are like, oh, Jason Page has his cards, you know. So like, if they see him somewhere at an airport or something, they can go up to him and get one of these cards. And I, I think that would be like a viral thing, right? Uh, mm-hmm. For sure. So I, I'm hoping this. Let's let's put this out there, guys. If you can clip that moment from the interview, put it out on social media. Somebody do it. He lives in New York. I'm sure somebody will see him walking down to like the bagel place or the deli or something like that. Do uh, do walk up to him, film it on social media and make it a thing, because I, I think that he would really enjoy that uh, if people were like swarming him asking for his cards. I know. But yeah, he seems like a really nice guy. He just seems happy now. Um, and that's great for him. You know, yeah. enjoy it while you can. Enjoy it yeah. while you can. That's all I can say. Yeah, he definitely seems like a, a very um, positive dude, and yes, and um, I, I'm glad. You know, I hope that people who who got to see this full interview or even like little snippets of it will um, get that impression of him because you know from the video it it looks like he's you know he's just trying to sell his autograph or trade his autograph, but if you go mm-hmm. deeper into it, it's 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 not like that at all. So uh, I'm I'm you know it's. It's a weird thing. Like I posted the video and it got a lot of negative views, but those negative that those negative views brought uh, brought uh, my uh, his attention to to me and the podcast, and then that mm-hmm. led to him agreeing to come onto the show and talk about himself and and all these uh, all these things that he does within the hobby. So I think mm-hmm. like it, you know, it kind of came full circle. It was a great interview. It's a great opportunity. This is like not something that we normally do. We don't normally bring guests onto the show unless I'm, unless I'm out or you're out. Yeah, right. Right. So right. This, is, this is like a, like a totally new thing that we were trying to um, do tonight. And if you guys like this type of format, let us know in the comment section, maybe we'll do more of this. Right. Um, maybe, maybe it's good for me not to talk for an hour and a half straight myself and let somebody <laughs> else talk for once in a while. You know what I mean? I, so uh, I, I think I like that. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, know, I know it was tough, Dan, but you you pulled through, man. <laughs> I was I was like I was biting my tongue. I was I wanted the spotlight, Merlin. I wanted the spotlight, but I was like, you know what? Be a gracious host. Be a gracious host, okay? I, I don't want the Pokemon community to come after me. And, oh no, and, no, that they're as bad as the Swifties. You don't I want know, that to happen. Right? They're crazy. Okay. All right. So, uh, anything else you want to talk about with the interview before we get into the show? No, it was great. I, yeah, I definitely learned a lot, and um, it's just it's very interesting. It, you had some good questions. It's good to hear. Like, even though I wish he would get residuals, it was cool to hear that. You know, what it all entailed and the logistics of everything of how he got where he was and how he got back into the success of the Pokemon world, and that yeah. it's helped him. You know, become. A superstar again so that that's great and people don't know how hard it is to be in the entertainment industry it's a even if you're successful like the rock you've got to hustle all the time it's almost like between two slaps you've got to hustle constantly because you don't know if you're going to get a paycheck tomorrow <laughs> yeah yeah or or if anybody's going to care about you you'll be yeah, relevant. exactly yeah so you've got to uh, grasp it why you can guys i can't emphasize it's it enough. funny it's funny when you're saying that because, like, over the weekend, I was a little bit sick, so I was like off social media, yeah, a little bit. Really? Even though I did post, even though I posted that thing on social, that's why I was like sharing. Well, thank I was God sharing you did. clips because I was just not feeling well, so I didn't want to make any content. So I was just sharing okay. content. Yeah, but I was thinking to myself, you know, it would be so easy just to get out of the game. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, this, right. This constant, this constant. Um, rat race of making content to stay relevant within the hobby. It'd be so easy just to re- call it quits and retire. Um, you know, this is where we can kind of get into uh, the talking points of the show. But one thing that happened right. last week that a lot of people were talking about is um, the uh, the account, the Collectible Guru. That account. Do you follow him at all on on X? No. What happened? Okay, he's like um, he's very popular on X and Twitter before that, and he had like three hundred thousand followers, and he's just the guy who comments on sports card hobbies and stuff like that um and other type of collectibles but anyways he made a a post saying that he sold his account so he built up his account to like over three hundred thousand view uh followers and he sold it to another account um 
He didn't really say what the terms were, how much he sold it for or anything like that. I still see him posting. So I don't even know. I don't know if he's working for somebody now or whatever. But there was a lot of there was a little bit of controversy over that. Um, Why is that? From other other content creators. And I'm just I'm going to go as far as to say there's there's hate. There is there's a lot of hate from other content creators saying that. You know, all he sold out, or all you know, he stole my content and reposted it for the purpose of building up his account to oh, to sell it. And I was just thinking to myself, like, you know, who cares about this stuff, dude? Like, why are you hating on this guy? Like, for me to get on Instagram right now, I've got twenty five thousand followers, yeah. and it's taken me like three years to get twenty five thousand followers. Right, right, right. Three years of posting every day, multiple times a day grinding yeah. away spending spending hundreds of you know tens of thousands of dollars on the hobby traveling buying equipment all this time right to get to exactly. 25,000 pretending that every day is a happy day <laughs> putting up with putting up with a bunch of bullshit you know trolls coming after me for for no damn reason so i, I can't even imagine what it would be like to build an account to 300,000 followers how much work that would take right right whether you're just reposting stories or taking people's content or doing whatever it is it's still a lot of fucking work and uh to do that and then to be able to sell it it's a huge accomplishment i i give credit to that guy you know for sure but a lot of people were kind of salty and i think it has to do with it's like you know why not me type type attitude you know what i mean like why don't people buy my account whatever (laughs) Well, because you don't have 300,000 followers. Well, that's that's more than Jeff Wilson, you know, I think. I it think is. He's like, I think he's like, I don't know where he is right now. Last time I checked, he was like over 100,000 followers. But that's more than Jeff Wilson, I think. So it's crazy accomplishment, you know what I mean? So um, so when yeah. you um, retire then, if you're going to hang it up, how much are you going to sell me, uh, your followers, subscribers to then? <laughs> do, you, do you come with that package? If I if I sell between two slabs, does that come with Merlin? <laughs> I don't know. Does are, are you just going to sell me the rest of your shares? I'll I'll, I'll take uh, um for the whole package, including Merlin and, and a weekend getaway with Merlin to the to the Dallas Card <laughs> Show. I'll sell the whole thing for a uh, five thousand bucks. Okay. Anybody? Oh my God! <laughs> buy I'll, I'll buy it right now. I'll buy my own, man. You sold five thousand bucks, and you get to share a room at the at the Marriott with Merlin. Oh god. Listen to this uh, CPAP machine go all night. Hey, that's better than sleeping with Mr. Minty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be like, can you imagine if we built up between two slabs and then somebody wanted to come in and buy it from us? I'd be like, are you sure? I know. Sure, take it. You know? Yeah. One day, but, one day, maybe like what's all know. about. I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe bar stools will buy between two slabs or they'll buy the I mean, great curator that we have honestly i'll tell you this if if somebody wanted to buy my account take it i would retire for sure i would i got no problem stepping away from the game the only reason i'm, I'm still in it at this point is because yeah. i told myself that i would outlast all those stupid trolls That's i right. would be the i will be the last man standing for sure before i let any of those trolls outlast me Unless, unless somebody pays me to go away, so that that's the exception. And how much yeah. will that take? <laughs> Depends on who it is. Depends on who it is. Because you know what, you know what would be a boss move. What's okay, that? is if one of those trolls bought me out to make me go away. <laughs> then, but I'll make them pay up. I'll make them pay up for sure. Oh my uh, goodness. You know, well, for that. it's going to well, cost. I'll take you up on that five thousand dollar offer. No, 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 no that's not know. for you. That's not for oh, you. Okay, <laughs> okay, darn. <laughs> Well, actually, come on, come I on. tried, we'll see, but we'll we see. but we have had peers though that if either sold their subscribers or bought a profile from other I people. I know people that started out in the hobby buying profile accounts. I mean, you know, Talon Sports Cards. He's okay. He's not hiding that. He's he's he said oh, he's that open on, about it. Yeah, he said that on Jeff Wilson's podcast that he okay. bought his account to build it up into what it is today, and he's built it up, you know, a lot since then. Um, Jeff Wilson. A, we have a super sticker, Adrian, real quick. Two dollars. All right, Adrian. We've got a comment coming that's, pretty soon. Appreciate that, Adrian. Thank you. We'll wait for his comment. But that's his two dollars uh, right there. <laughs> Jeff Wilson said that uh, you know, he's had people, you know, offer to buy his 
his his business at some point. So, you know, I'm sure it'll become a more regular thing. But, oh, here's Adrian's comment. Here it is. Okay. Oops, I, I double hit it. Sorry about that. CV Sports Cards gave us the $2 question here. Come on, bro. You love the attention. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> That's his $2 we'll worth we'll right see. there. It's two we'll cents. see. We'll see. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like, I, okay, I'll, I'll, can we have this conversation real quick here? Yes, let's do it. Before the pandemic, before I got back into the hobby, before I right. became a vendor slash content creator to now podcaster and full-time content creator, essentially, all my free time I spent, I was still collecting stuff. I was collecting toys and all these other things. But, you know, the majority of free time I had, yeah. um, because I didn't use social media that much. Believe it or not, I was a very private person. Okay. Um, you were the majority of time that, that I, I, uh, free time that I had, I spent watching TV. Like I would watch Monday night raw every week, three hours, Monday night raw. I would watch, you know, game of Thrones and movies yes. and TV shows. I'd be watching like two or three TV shows at a time. Sometimes I'd be binge watching. I I'm not, I'm not joking. When I say I would watch like three to four, Three to four hours of TV every night. That was Damn. like my routine. That was my routine. Okay. And um, and because I started doing social media, um, you know, my my free time went to being on social media. Like I had to cut out TV. That's how, you know, people always ask me, how do you find time to do all this stuff? I cut out TV completely. And because I cut out TV where I was watching like long form television, half an hour, one hour or two hour movies. And I converted my attention to social media where it's like 30 second, one minute clips. I noticed that my attention span has drastically been reduced where it's hard for me to watch TV now. Right. Like I've just, right. I've conditioned myself to being like a 30 second window of uh, attention, which I don't like. I don't like that at all, to be honest. Like now if I watch TV, I have to have my phone in my hand and I'm scrolling as I'm paying attention passively to the TV show. Like I can't, it's yeah, hard for me to you can't engage in a movie or a TV show anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And since I had, you know, my daughter, I don't even go to movie theaters anymore. Right. <laughs> so, and then the pandemic happened and all that stuff. So like, I, I was think, just thinking yesterday, I, I miss watching TV. You know, I'll still keep up with some shows here, there. Like right now I'm watching Halo. I'm watching, um, um, invincible i'm watching the bad batch okay. but it's it, it doesn't feel the same way that it does before like like i would look forward to binging a tv show over the weekend you know sitting on the couch having a drink a bowl of chips and binging a tv show for like six hours or something like that i would look forward to that but now i don't it's hard for me to do that because of my low attention span right but I miss those days you know I miss those days. I miss watching Monday Night Raw every week. Now I just watch the highlights. You know, you I miss that's all you do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just because I don't have time to watch it on the so playback. So when we talk about it, when we like review it together, or I talk to you about it, like we're at shows, you just know it from the highlights. Yeah. The highlights are, I mean, I'll watch a pay per view, but I'll skip matches and things like that. But, you know, I just kind of miss it's just like a simpler time. You know what I mean? It's just a simpler <laughs> time. So I, I think to myself, if I ever get out of the game, if I ever get out of the hobby content game for whatever reason it could be, right? That's what I'm going to do. That's that's my retirement is I'm going to just be be a couch potato and, and yeah. try to build up my my attention span again. Well, and, I feel like watching. since since I've known you and you've come out your of your shell and become a um, social media, you know, influencer on social media that um, you've basically got more ADHD so you can't um, engage in television or movies anymore <laughs> that's true basically that, that yeah <laughs> because you know? when i first met you you seemed like a very quiet reserved kind of guy and then all of a sudden am. when you start doing social media i sometimes you are but now once you warm up to someone you're, you're a talker so you i mean you know me so well you see me all the time you talk you know my ears off just like you do the the followers here but I noticed when you interact with people you don't know that well, you're you're very reserved still. Yeah, I'm a I don't know what you call it a, a wallflower or a shrinking violet or anything like that. If you Ooh, a, okay, if you put me into a group setting and I don't know these people, yeah, um, 
I'm not going to say anything. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I, I'm an introvert for sure. This, despite. Until the camera comes presence. on. Until the camera comes yeah. on. Yeah. This, this, this is an act guys. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is just the great curator personality. But if you have to yeah. get me, if you sit down and you hang out with me or have dinner or whatever, uh, you know, on, on small one-on-one -on -one groups, I'm okay. In big groups, like four plus four or five plus people, <laughs> you know, I don't like it at all. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, One of the things I'm going to tell people this because okay. they're going to, they're going to understand how you torture me sometimes. I One, of the, that I, One of the things that I hate that Merlin does is when oh, we God. go to a convention or show or something like that, and the show's over and it's time to get food, time to get dinner. We're planning out where to go. Merlin will be like, Hey, I invited these guys. And I'm like, who the hell are these guys? <laughs> oh, you know, this guy, over he sits over there and, and his friend and this guy. And I'm like, I don't know these guys. I don't want to eat dinner with them. You know, it makes me very tense. You know, one time, <laughs> one time I'm hoping these guys won't see this. But one time we, uh, we, we ate Korean barbecue with a group of friends and a couple of guys I had never met before. They knew me for my content, but I didn't know them. And it was very uncomfortable. It was just very uncomfortable. But it was me. only like, oh my goodness. It was just like four of us. You know, so he does that, guys. Merlin tortures me because Merlin's very um uh, uh Merlin's an uh extrovert. I'm an introvert. Yeah, well, that's all you can also blame um uh oh gosh, can you even think right now. Um uh, Mo for that. You see, Mo, also, yeah, Mo was working. Oh, look, Jason Page is in the comments. He <laughs> said, Jason Page is actually watching. He's still watching. Oh, I he's hope so. Watching. I want to see if he's talking. He wants to find out if we're talking shit about him afterwards. He's, he's going through the him. comment section just to make sure he's okay. micromanaging us right now as we speak. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna DM. He's gonna privately DM anybody that's being a jerk, and then he's gonna win them. No, no one is. Kindness. People pretty cool. Someone yeah. said something kind of rude, but I kind of erased the comment. Good, good, good. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you. Nothing Thank big. you. For Thank you for checking up on us, Jason. We appreciate you. I enjoyed it. I've got a thousand more questions. So when I see him at the next Collecticon or next show, Dude, I, I think you guys would get we'll along about. great. J Jason, well, yeah. if you're still if you're still watching this, Jason, <laughs> next time you got to talk to Merlin because I think that you guys will get along great. Merlin is a music fanatic. You guys oh, would have yeah. probably talked all all night long. That, that that's the next interview. You and Merlin, the next well, interview. It was funny because he, you know, he did the. Um, the jingle for Folgers in Your Cup, and which we all pretty much know. You've had to live under a rock if you don't know that jingle. For the you know, It's like Folgers in Your Cup. And I literally just like, what, a week or two ago, I was watching this, this cult home video thing. It's called Museum of Home Video. I'll give them a plug. And they showed a whole like 10-minute segment of all the different people who have done that jingle. And it was hilarious. And know that Jason is part of those jingles is hilarious. Were you, Merlin, are you the one that was commenting um, under the great curator? That, yeah, that? that's me. Yes. Okay. You said that you saw it, You one of your favorite movies. Oh, no, no. For the record. He did For the Record, which they used to do in Los Feliz. I used to go that time. They would have to get a T Tarantino theme or a Scorsese theme or a... Uh, a Baz Luhrmann theme. It was, I forgot what the name of the uh, restaurant is in Los Velas. And it became, maybe about 15 years ago, they started it. And about 10 years ago, it became like a huge hit. Like you really had to like get your ticket way in advance. It became really big. And I think they're doing like a, a big tour based on this for the record. It was kind of like a, a dinner and a musical kind of thing. And I also had friends that were involved in it too. So I'm sure Jason and I have like mutual friends that are in this world. Yeah, for yeah. the record. And he was part of, a, I was reading his bio, he's part of like a rock band or something like that. You ever heard of his band, like Blood, Sweat, and Tears, I think it's called? Well, th that was a band that was really famous back in the late 60s. They actually um, won a Grammy. Um, okay, maybe that's not his band then, but I, I know his band is called... I don't know the same um, band because he would have been way too young. Jason's only a year <laughs> older than I am. He was yeah, born in 69, yeah. I was born in 70. Yeah, Jason, he's still in the comments. So maybe you can tell us your the, the band that you used to be part of, Jason, or if it's still active. But I'm sure he knows. Uh, like, Jason, do you know, like, Ty Taylor or Doug Crawford or any of those people that I'm really good friends with? He said B, F, and T. I thought that stands for Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Probably is. Well, I mean, he, maybe he did the revival of it. Because, you know, uh, how bands like that will hire new people to, to sing in the band. 
Yeah, he said that's him. I sung with him in 2012. You know, what comes up must come down. Spinning wheels got to get that's that's my version. Don't hire me, okay. Jason. <laughs> next next time, next time Collector Con, Merlin, Merlin jumps on stage and, and does a duet with Jason Page. <laughs> He'll never be invited back to Collector Con again. <laughs> uh, oh look, yes, Ty was one of my best friends for 30 years. He yeah, he was in a vintage trouble. Um, he's performed to a lot of my friends. They did um the the uh, we will rock you and the uh, rock star thing with in excess and the, the contest and also with Queen. And so you, yeah, know, you probably you know, know those people. Too? Yeah, I know Ty Taylor. He's really good friends with my buddy John and my buddy Doug Crawford, who was in We Will Rock You. That's the people who I went to go see uh, you two with at the Sphere. Oh, interesting. interesting. Yeah, so it's a small world, man. It's a yeah, small. You guys community. probably travel in the same circles i bet i'm sure yeah because all those guys are like in our each group too very cool very cool so there you okay. go you started saying all that stuff i started like that i bet you he knows a lot of uh, my friends okay um well um i mean like you know since we did that interview we don't have yeah. too much more time to talk about all the other crazy things like i wanted to get to no. the otani topic but we'll save that for maybe I, th I think we need a little bit more information to come out uh, before we can, uh, you know, have a discussion about the Otani. You think, you think this is going to be the tip of the iceberg right now? Yeah, I think there's, I think there's uh, big problems brewing there. Um, oh man, really? For for Otani, but we'll see what happens. We need more information for sure. Uh, well, I that. told my like my friends this weekend. I'll just give a short thing that I thought was kind of weird that that happened along almost the same week that he announced that he was married, and people didn't even know he was dating, let alone married. There, there could be something crazy yeah. going on. You know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe the Yakuza is involved somehow. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. But we need more information. We need more information. Yeah, go do sure. your research but, while you're away. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to make the announcement yet. But you know, no, 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 no. We have a lot of announcements to make uh, of upcoming things for okay. you guys. We, uh, I think we can tell them this right now, Merlin. Um, is that we are planning to go to the London Card Show in yes. May. Yes. So we are working with them. We have a partnership with the London Card Show uh, promoters. So we're going to be uh, giving you guys some exciting announcements about that. But we're going to be telling a very interesting story. Um, uh, basically, a sum to summarize it is, is we're going to be telling the story of how we uh, decided, why we decided to go to the London Card Show. Mm -hmm. How we're preparing to go to the London Car Show, the actual logistics of bringing inventory and traveling across the pond to go to this, this show, and whatever experience that we have there, we will document it, show you guys that. We'll do a whole deep uh, debrief on that. So that's going to be a really fun story arc that we're going to tell over the next month and a half or so. So um, stay tuned for that in the next couple of weeks, guys. Also, a really exciting part of the, uh, the London Car Show story is that we are putting together a group we are putting together a group of super americans group. a super group a, 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 a super team of american vendors to go to the london card show and dominate dominate with our american inventory that they don't have access to i am putting together my dream team of vendors yes we, like the avengers for yes yes collectible vendors yes we're, go, we're going back there to uh to uh, you know, make an impression on all the the Europeans, the the UK people out there. So um, stay tuned for that. That's going to be really fun and exciting. Um, and we ha might have a couple new sponsorships coming soon as part of that. So you know, good news for us. Good good news for the channel. We continue to grow. We continue to build relationships with everything like that. Um, Anything you want, any other announcements you want to make before we get to the comments, Merlin? No, I want to thank everyone who showed up at the, I think, World of Sports memorabilia this weekend, where, not, where I was there with the show locator at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. Thank you, everyone that came and introduced themselves, who watched the show. Dan, they all asked where you were. They asked about you, but they made sure I said hello. So I, um, they gave me a lot of gifts. So everyone who came and introduce themselves thank you again and for all the new people that subscribe to the great curator my channel over the weekend thank you as well 
Yeah, you know, um, the reason like people ask me why I didn't go, um, I mean, I say this multiple times on this podcast. I'm scared to go to San Francisco, dude. Like, what was it like? Were you were you like not scared your car was gonna get broken into or anything like that? Where where were you staying? No, it's well, it's been, uh pretty close. It's probably like less than two minutes away from the venue. I just took all my stuff out and I had the body bags I shared with the cure. The show locator, but um, yeah, I, I was fine, man. I mean, I'm not going to leave my stuff in there for people to salivate over for sure. I'm just, I'm just terrified to go to to the Bay Area. I heard that the the In and Out in Oakland they had to close it. Well, maybe uh, that's that's Oakland. Maybe I'm not hanging out in Oakland. I'm hanging out or, in San Francisco. Or any part of, of San Francisco. Where where's the Cow Palace? That's like outside of San Francisco, right? It's yeah, it's about 15 uh, miles out. 15 minutes yeah, out. Maybe, uh, maybe. It's still a little sketchy area. It's pretty sketchy. Um, but for the most part, it's safe. I mean, it's just like living in LA. There, and when we went to, into the city in San Francisco, we were more mostly in the, the hipster area. So no one's sitting there salivating with bats and thing and guns waiting for me to get out of my car mm -hmm. to bang me on the head and break into my car. Yeah. I, I'm just terrified. I'm just, well, it's, if well, I was we, by myself, or if I was with you, maybe I, I'd be okay. But like, I wouldn't bring. You'll be up. fine. It you was know. fine. But we, like I said, we were in the uh, the hipster areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this week is WonderCon, so I'm actually it is? Where to is it? WonderCon in Anaheim. You can come oh. if you want. Uh, Saturday, I'm going to be going. But I got I got one thing that bends my corner about this. Okay. What's that? So I'm buying the ticket for WonderCon. The ticket is fifty seven dollars for uh, one day. Fifty-seven dollars for one day, but hey. here's what that—that's okay. Whatever. It's a okay, non-number. That's, that's okay. This is what really pisses me off about buying tickets to WonderCon or San Diego Comic Con or whatever. Okay, what is it? They charge a fifteen-dollar handling fee for me to buy my ticket online. Okay, to seventy-two dollars to get the QRE code on my phone or to print it out. And to take it to their window for them to print out the badge and give it to me. $15 handling fee on top of the $57 ticket. That just feels like a total ripoff to me. And it's at the Anaheim Convention Center? Yeah. But you can't, you had to buy it online. You can't go over there and get them yourself? It's not guaranteed. You know, it could sell out or you might not be. No, no. I meant like if you went over there like uh, today or something, you could go over there and pick one up. I mean, I've never tried to do that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Think, it's just a question. I don't think that you can do that. Okay. You know? I don't know if that's because you have to um you have to register online and you get an ID. Okay. And gotcha. You have to use that ID to buy your batch. You know, like you get an ID number. So I don't know. The whole thing just seems like a way to squeeze the the consumer. You know what I mean? Like like this whole conversation that we had with Jason Page who is what he's trying to give value to his fans, right. to to his consumers Makes as sense. much as he can, where other people like like the WonderCon, for example, they're going to fucking squeeze you. So the tickets are seventy-two dollars for one day. A WonderCon. So, so they kind of sneak in that extra fifteen dollars to your surprise. It doesn't cost fifteen dollars to handle. You know, no, it's when, ridiculous. You got to pick it up a will call. You know what I mean? Like it's just crazy. It's just crazy to me. You know, two fifty. I pay well, two fifty. I, I pay that's five. An Anaheim thing because they did that when we saw went to um, Star Wars Celebration. They did something very similar. Yeah. Yeah, so it might be an think, Anaheim thing. This is why I think Ticketmaster got like sued or something. Yeah, because it was. was. It was all these fees. Pearl Jam. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. So, anyways, that's what I'll be doing this weekend. So I'm super excited about that. Well, maybe we can and get then, in spotlight and we can start uh, suing yeah. them. And yeah. between two slaps, will be uh, in the uh, front pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the news. Um, uh, and then, uh, before we get the comments next week, um, some big things are happening next week, guys. So you want to make sure that you will tune in next week. We're going to have some, 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 some big time, um, topics to discuss and you guys are going to love it. Big announcements coming next week. Okay. So with that, let's get to the comment section before we run over time here. Mark, the collector, happy Tuesday party. People got to catch them all. Yep. You do buddy. Sup, Chili. Hello. Carlos, good evening, everyone. Jay Patel, what's up, buddy? Diddy Cards, I heard Dan hates Pokemon and kids, though, so this will be interesting how it goes. Yes. 
How did it go, Denny? No. Do you think? No, I, I, I do hate kids, but I also just hate Denny. That's that's what it is. <laughs> Stevie Sports Cards. What's up, Cheese? What's up, Adrian? Going back to Denny's cards. Denny's cards is the worst, guys. If you've been following my rivalry <laughs> with him on on uh, on Instagram, like this guy will not stop um, tagging me in all his posts. It's so annoying. Like the you dude get just tagged like, on every post of his. Pretty much like every post. Like he oh wants. Gosh. He wants my. Um, what's the word? What's that word like? Like when you when a Attention. when a, <laughs> when a ne neglected child wants. Um, yes. Some some type of approval from their father. That's what it feels like. It feels like he he wants yeah. my approval so badly. Exactly. He wants to be me. It's really annoying. It, so I, you're, you're saying you're like a father figure to Diddy. Uh, either that or like he's my little <laughs> brother or something. But you know he's just annoying. You know what I mean? And Are you all about the same to, age? I'm gonna try to. Um, no, actually, he's older than me. Believe he that. is. I think, I think he is older. He's than between me. you and my age. My age? Yeah, but not that much. Not that much. I okay. think he's like a year older. Oh, I didn't something. know. But you know, um, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try the Jason Page method. And I'm Which gonna is? try to I'm gonna try to be calm and be gracious to him and reach out to him privately and see what the hell his problem is and try to reason with him because uh he's really annoying. Did you see that? Did you see that wrestling promo that he did where he dressed up as like um a pirate, like a, you know, crazy village people pirate or something. He was trying to be the macho man. See, this is how bad Denny's cards is. Is that what okay? that was? This is how oh. bad Denny's cards is. He was trying to do a wrestling promo, but he started off as macho man. <laughs> then he morphed into Hulk Hogan, not intentionally, okay? And then he ended it with a Ric Flair woo. <laughs> so, but he was dressed as like a pirate the whole time. So oh, I see uh, it now. Yeah, he is. It was uh, it was hard to watch. It was wait hard a minute. To watch. I don't know what to say. Did Macho Men wear a cowboy hat, like a sequence cowboy hat, not a pirate hat? Yes, yes, yes. So, so either he <laughs> either he got that mixed up, or he was just too cheap to get a uh, cowboy hat for the gimmick. He was trying to do a bit. He was trying to do a bit, but he would not commit to the whole thing, to the whole gimmick. So he just. Probably grabbed like yeah, and it's you know, a black, it's like a costume. black pirate hat, and Macho Man always wore colorful outfits. Like yeah, he should have yeah, had sure. colorful shades, a fringe shirt on, like a colorful fringe shirt, and then the colorful sequence cowboy. Was hat. It was terrible, and it's and he's just annoying. He's the worst. Okay, moving on. Yeah, I would have never known. Thank you for letting me know, Kenny G. Yo, fellas, what's up, Kenny G? Carlos, welcome to between two slabs, Jason. Yeah, thank you. John Holt, Dan, the man. Carlos, very informative. Thank you. Carlos, again, uh, Jason Page is well-rounded. Yes, he is. Carlos, great interview. The Sports Car Professor 7 Ora says, good evening, gentlemen. Denny Cards, there he is. Speaking of the devil, Pokemon... Is uh, Kobe, Kobe uh, is what I'm hearing. Pokemon is Kobe is what I'm hearing. Is that what he's pretty much asking? Yeah, I'm not going to argue with that. I mean, I would I would imagine that Pokemon is way more popular than Kobe Bryant, so I, I'm not going to argue that. Oh, that's me, the great curator, a.k.a. Berlin. There are only 10 1914 Babe Ruth rookie graded cards in existence. Yeah, I would he was imagine. asking like, how many Babe Ruth cards. Like there, his nineteen fourteen ones, his nineteen thirty three cards, and then whatever other cards that he has out there. I, I right. imagine there's probably less than a thousand of them total yeah, across total. the entire population. But to know that there's only ten nineteen fourteen Babe Ruth graded rookie cards, that's pretty low pop, super low. Carlos, I'm looking for you, Jason Page, for an autographed card. Very gracious, Carlos. What's the link to Jason Page's online store? Uh, I don't have the link, but we can put it in the show notes later. But go to Jason Page's Instagram. Yeah, or it's, it's in the description below. Okay, yeah, it's in the description the below. But you can also follow him on Instagram and TikTok. And he has a link tree that will take you to right. all his all his pages. And I would say this. I will go, I'll go as far as this, guys. If you enjoyed the interview with Jason, please go support him. Uh, go buy one of his cards or whatever on his website. They're not that expensive. 
And, you know, you're, it's just a way for you to support another artist. Um, I'm a real big com uh, proponent of this for like the wrestling community. Whenever I go to like a wrestling show, if I see a wrestler that I enjoyed watching, like Sergeant Slaughter, for example, or Bret Hart, I'll pay for their photograph. I'll pay for their autograph, their T-shirt or whatever, just because I want to support them. This is how they make a living. This is how they monetize themselves. You know, I, ma I, I make those I, I pay for those cameos of the wrestler cameos yeah. and as a joke. Right. But it's a way for me to show my appreciation uh, for those wrestlers. So I'll be ordering more of those in the future uh, for that. So if oh, you yeah. guys enjoyed the interview with Jason Page, please go support him on his on his site. Yeah, it's speaking. I just want to ask you a quick question without revealing the thing. You haven't done that post yet of the one you were telling me about. Where you have you? I did. Oh, you've already posted. Okay, I'm so behind. Yeah. I need to check it out. Yeah, I showed you. I sent it to you, and I, you know. Okay. Yeah. How's it going? Uh, it was good. I, I, I cut it up. You know, I had to make it work, but uh, you can go watch it and you'll see. Okay. It. You know, I, okay. I, I, a great I, I think player. it was cool. Yeah, I, I got good feedback from it. I got good feedback from it. I might do a remix of it. <laughs> Carlos, great interview tonight, Dan. Very enjoyable and informative. Thank you. Uh, Danny Cards, thank you, Jason Page. See you at the National, dude. CV Sports Cards, Dan, you did a great job, brother. Thank you, uh, Adrian. Watch Cards. It was great seeing you, Merlin, at the Cow Palace show. Thank you. It was great seeing you, too. Thanks for coming by and hanging out with me. It was cold there, I'll tell you that much. The Cow Palace, there was no heat, and I was freezing. Woo! Emmanuel Delgadillo, great show, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Adrian, CB Sports Cards. Come on, bro. You love the attention. You're not going anywhere. That was the $2 uh, super sticker. For the right price, for the right price, I will I will definitely fade away into the sunset. Here's here's what I'll I'll put this out there, okay? I think the uh, I think the trolls should band together and create a GoFundMe campaign, okay? With a very specific goal, a dollar amount, and if they reach that goal, then I will gladly take the money and retire. <laughs> and uh, you'll never see me again. I will move to to uh, Thailand. You'll uh, on a beach in Thailand, and you'll never see me again. <laughs> oh, oh, we are. I want to go too. I want to go there. We're going to go to Bond Island. Have you been there yet? Bond Island? No. James Bond? Bond Island? No. Yeah. That's where my friend proposed to his wife there. Jason Page. Thanks, everyone, for all the great comments. Thank you, Jason, for being here. <laughs> CV Sports Cars. Thank you, Jason Page. Uh, it was great to see that side of how things work. Yes, I agree. So do you feel like uh, it was pretty informative, Dan? I think so. You know, like, like I, I gave you my takeaways earlier. Um, right. And it's, you know, what's interesting to me is that he was, he's only been doing this since 2020. Like he's only been going to right. con since 2020 signing. And, you know, it's, it's like, you know, if you sign a card, if you sign any Pokemon card, you can throw it up on eBay and make 50 bucks or whatever it is. Right. Right. Minimum. It like, Dude, like that's like printing money. Basically, he could go buy a bunch of, um, you know, uh, bulk Pokemon cards for like a penny, right? And because because of his status as seeing the theme song, like he said, he's not a voice actor. He can sign any card, any card out there. So like he could literally be printing money if he wanted to, but he doesn't do that. You know, he makes his own cards that he'll give away or he'll sign or whatever. Oh, wow. Right. He's not, he's not like flooding the market, which I think is, is pretty awesome. You know what I mean? Cause you know, we know a lot of people that sign all the time for, for money and then their autographs are not worth much at all. You know what I mean? So I thought that was kind of a cool little tidbit. Now were those cards that he showed on the show, were those licensed cards or his own custom made cards? I think those are his custom cards. Okay. But they're super popular. Yeah. Which, by the way, let me just throw another shout out here. I, this is no secret anymore. I am <laughs> partnering with somebody to come out with my own cards. And we're going to be making announcements any day now. And so maybe maybe one day I'll make it. It wasn't today? I thought it was going to be today. We're not going to do it today? Uh, shipping and delay. Shipping oh, delays have caused, caused a delay to tell us when. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to put okay. it out there. Because if, if there's 33 people currently in the chat, and anybody that watches this on the playback, this will be the first unofficial announcement. Go to Ooh. the Instagram. Go go on to Instagram. Yeah. And start following the account 
Saturday morning cards. Saturday, Saturday morning, morning cards card. on Instagram. Yes. Yes, it's all, all one word: Saturday morning cards. That's a lot yes, of words. It'll pop up. You'll see a TV <laughs> SMC. You'll see it. Start following that account. There's no post yet, but okay. pretty soon we'll be dropping hints on, um, you know, on our first release. And I think, uh, you know, I'm pretty proud of it. So we'll see. We'll I'm see. listening, man. I'm listening. Yes. I'm gonna go Saturday do that right morning now. Card. Go follow that account, guys. Wait for the announcement. Saturday morning cards. I'm gonna go check it out right now. I'm gonna follow it right now, guys. Let me get in there. Diddy cards, good stuff, Jason Page. Thank you, buddy. Mm. Let's see, Adrian again. CV Sports cards. He's on fire tonight. Don't forget the twenty dollar parking fee too, Dan. <laughs> He's talking about the Anaheim. I know. Yeah, I. You know, I live really close to Anaheim, so I just take an Uber there, but. Logistically, it's a bitch to get into. Is that what we'll do next time at the Burbank Card Show when they have it um, in August? There, or we just want to take it because you and I got stuck in that traffic on Saturday for an hour and a half. Yeah, that was terrible, dude. I don't know. Yeah, we got to figure mm -hmm. a, uh, a way around that. Highway robbery. CV Sports Cards cost eighty dollars for the Burbank Card Show. Speaking of, for four days, ended up costing seven hundred dollars almost. Oh, a lot of yeah, overhead. that was. That's that's a lot, dude. I hate that. Let's not. That's that bends my corner too. But let's not. <laughs> we've had a positive show so far. Let's not get into that. Yeah, way to go. Way to be a Debbie Downer, Adrian. The sports car professor seven. I thought I was going to see Oris this weekend, actually, because does he live up in the Bay Area? Oris is an AI. AI. Yeah, I he's thought an was, AI. I think he's not a real person. Hello to me. He's not a real person. He's an AI guy. He is. Someone just sends him to ask us questions and tell us. Comments. Uh, do you plan to do a review of the upcoming Friday release of the Panini Immaculate WWE card set? So this is what the, the first big it, it is not card of the year. It's not immaculate. It's impeccable. Oh, it's impeccable. But are they still yeah. a premium? Is that on yeah. card auto or what? Is yeah, that and be? it's expensive. Um, so it no, is. we're not. We're not going to be doing any type of. I don't know. I need to see some of these cards, but. It's way too expensive for what it for what it came out to be. Wait, I think I'm not like, gonna see you do a case break on Friday. No, dude, they were, the boxes were like retailing at like uh eleven hundred dollars a box. Gosh, the, the hell! And you, you know, know the ROI on that's gonna be pretty crappy, isn't no, it? No, 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 no. I wait. I will wait for Immaculate when that comes out, if that comes out at all. But I'm not spending eleven hundred dollars on an impeccable box. On impeccable? I'll, I'll buy the singles. Cool. I'll buy the singles. And how many, like, is it a box, like five? Probably, like maybe okay. 10 cards or something, eight cards. Whew, that's a lot of money. Army ATC 22, check this guy out. One of the great, my favorite Instagram guys right now, currently. Hello, fellas, the number one non-sports card collector in the world. Thank you so much, brother. What's up, Alex? Alex is the uh, Alex is the man that um, got beat. He was the number two, He was the, the, the runner-up for the... Um, piggy bank oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hunt in Atlanta where he dived into the planter, but he was not quick enough because our friend Zach, uh, Chicago bench mob, beat him to it. <laughs> he got the card, it was funny. Yeah, two big guys, too. They're like football player size, both of them are. Uncle Panda followed, thumbs up. Thank you, buddy. Gattered Comics. Oh, our speaking of the devil, the doc, speaking of the doctor, great show, guys. Thank you. He was it watching is. this. Loved it. He, I am blessed. Because he, 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 I, I'm, I'm contractually obligated to promote Shattered Comics once really? per show. Not, not really, but since he's in here, I just happened I just happened to have within arm's reach one of his uh, signed Shattered Comics exclusive comic books here. Signed personally to me, the great curator with a nice curator. little... He doesn't even know his own name. <laughs> with a nice little uh, spider sketch here. So... Shattered Comics, if you guys don't know, his real name, the artist, is Matt Damasi, who happens to be a physician in real life. But somehow he Dang. finds the time to build these masterpieces that take 150 hours of labor, three, four months to build. And uh, it's just amazing. Really, really underrated artist. Go check out his, uh, his site on Instagram because I have a feeling that he's going to be one of those like – He's gonna be like piggy bank status at some point where people oh are goodness. gonna people are gonna really wanna get some of his pieces. I'm actively negotiating with him 
to get me one of his pieces. I want him to do a custom, not a custom, but I want him to make Spider-Man 2099 cover for me, number one. He's too busy to do it, but that's my dream. If not, maybe I can get one of his pieces. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to get one of this Venom piece off of him at some point. Nice. Love it. Yeah. Check him out, guys. Uh, Aqua Panda looks like it's going to be all the cartoons on Saturday morning at 80s and 90s. I think he's talking about that site on Instagram. Well, well, Uncle Panda, we will see. We will see. You know, we will see. Shattered Comics again. Let's show Jason Page the Charizard mosaic. Has he not seen it yet? Matt, forward that to me or forward it directly to Jason. I, he's probably not watching right now, but forward that to him because maybe he'll sign it. Maybe if we could get it to him, he'll sign it. If you think that would add value to your artwork, I'm sure it would. Um, but that that he definitely needs yeah. to see that. I think he can appreciate it for sure. Michael Tom, pick it up. Uh, Cal Palace. Good evening, Merle and Dan. Great meeting you, Merle, at the Cal Palace show. What's the name of the London Card Show? Location and date. Thank you, guys. Have a great evening. Michael brought me a lot of cool pop culture vintage stuff, like from the Monkees, the Beatles, JFK, Adams Family, Muscle Cars. It was a pretty good mix of uh, shoebox of cards. So thank you. That was really nice of you. The London Card Show is actually called the London Card Show. I believe it is the uh, weekend of the May 11th and 12th. Correct, Dan? Correct. Yes. And it's, I don't know the exact location. But someone told me they think it's like a, an hour south of London, which yeah, is a very nice, very nice uh, part of town. I heard very nice yeah, neighborhood. Yeah. It's on a race. It's on a horse racing track. So it's you oh, know, that's why. So there's money. It's for there like the, it's for like the aristocrats. I'm sure like yes. uh, the royals go there to to race their horses and things. like yes, that. Yes, all the blue blood will be hanging out with us that weekend. Yeah. Army ATC 22. My piggy banks video will be dropping next week. Such a fun time and appreciative for the runner-up prize, guys. Thanks for putting that on. It's always fun to do different things at these shows. Yes, it is. I and agree. We got to do it more gonna, I'm going to speak to Piggy Banks. Maybe we can get a Piggy Banks scavenger hunt for London. We will see, guys. Stay tuned. I'm actually going to try to talk to him tomorrow. So maybe we can get – maybe we'll have some Piggy Banks announcements happening soon. And actually – I'm very close to um, doing a big piggy banks deal myself. So Woo! stay tuned for that. If you are a piggy banks collector, you're going to want to pay attention to the next few weeks because um, I feel like, I feel like, uh, you know, his prices are going to go up again. He's already raised his prices like two times this year or in the, in the last year. So I feel like, I feel like the secondary value of his cards are going to go up in value um, potentially pretty soon. So pay attention to that guys. Yes, nice. Uh, Army ATC 22 again. Keep up the great work, you two. Rewinding to watch the interview now. Met Jason Page at the National last year in the lobby and had a pretty inter good interaction on my blog. That's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. We, we as a hobby, as a, as a card hobby, we need to welcome Jason Page over, okay? He... He's beloved on the Pokemon side, but let's welcome him over to our side and let's see if we can teach him on how to better monetize um, his platform because I feel like that the fact that he writes an inscription, he does a, a unique doodle and he writes his full name for whatever he charges for that. I feel like whatever he's charging, he's it's it's not enough for, for what he's doing, uh, despite what people may say. So, you know. Let's see. Let's see if we can show him some some best practices uh, in the hobby, and then uh, and then really he can take it to the next level. What? How cool was that? That he did the uh, gotta catch them all between two slabs. <laughs> we gotta clip that. We gotta clip that. Okay? Or, or tell him you will uh, pay a little more to have a longer version. We need extended <laughs> remix. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's all the comments. Uh, we're already over our time, guys. We're, we're past two hours. You guys don't want to listen to us anymore. Uh, let's wrap <laughs> it up, Merlin. Do your last-minute uh, plugs, shout-outs. Tell them to buy the T-shirts. All that's good stuff. That's right. We got some T-shirts. What, they're $30? Is that right? I don't want to $30 with only a couple sizes left. And I tell you guys right now, I'm not going to print any more of these, okay? Because I don't want to hold them in my house. I'm not going to print any more of these. The so next design we do will be different. Okay, it will be limited edition different. So wait, but why would you the gold ones? Did we have any gold ones whatsoever? 
we have a couple gold ones left. I think. Okay, okay. So the gold right. slabs. So these are special edition ones. And let's yes. emphasize so, that. There's black ones so, and there's gold ones. Yes. So that's kind of like the wood of ones, right? <laughs> that's like a super fractor of black uh, prism one of one, basically. Actually, if you, if you see it that way. Actually, no more golds. No more golds. No more Just golds. Oh, oh my Here's gosh. The black left. Okay, you the black, put that the on black eBay black. for resale right now. Make yeah. double your money. <laughs> so if you guys want to support the podcast, if you yes. like this material, please, please, one shirt, one shirt supports Merlin for for a whole year. So get get one of these shirts, guys. Okay, we appreciate it. Uh, down below, follow the great yes. curator. Follow Merlin on all the platforms. Uh, in the show notes is Jason Page's website and links Correct. and things like that. So check that out, guys. Um, tune in for next week. Next week will be a very special show. So tune in for that. Anything else you want to tell them, Erwin? Yes. And if you didn't get to watch this live and if you're um, driving to work or coming back from work uh, during the awful traffic jams or working out, look at the links below in the descriptions as well. There's all the links to all the podcasts like Spotify, Buzzsprout, Google, Amazon. The list is endless. We're on all formats so please go on there subscribe um listen as your favorite leave a please leave a comment even we want to get in everybody's algorithms who are in cards of the collectibles so just check it out that's it and give us a five-star review please yes. okay i want to there make you go. The I knew it was something I had 100 asked. we're always outside of the top 100 Let's get let's break the top 100 for the podcast list, guys. Give us a five star review. Download the that's episode. All we need that's, get, that's all we need to get past Denny. Yes, yes. Okay. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for hanging out with us. We hope you enjoyed the show. We will see you next week. Bye bye. Two nerds wishing they could grow body hair, comics, cards, and toys. Nothing that would interest.